When we started this podcast, myself and Josh realized that we only had one story about getting detained in a Japanese prison for 70 days. And if we didn't get some interesting people on as guests, this was going to be a venture short-lived. Last night, we sat down and recorded a podcast with Aaron Lindsay. Years ago, I was doing some design work for his then store, now label LYG, and we got to talking. He told me the most unbelievable story I've ever heard. 19 years old and holidaying Bali in late 2002 with seven friends. He was standing talking to a couple of girls at Paddy's bar when a suicide bomber walked in and detonated a bomb strapped to his body. This was the first of two coordinated attacks which left 202 people dead, including 88 Australians. Az has never told this story in public before and we're genuinely honoured that he sat down with us to talk through that night and how it shaped the lives of himself and so many others connected through the Bali bombings. Club Good. Club Good. You were in an earthquake last week. Yes, survived. Another <laughs> thing I've survived. <laughs> Add earthquake to the list. So yeah, we got. It was actually pretty crazy because I got woken up at. I'd just gone to sleep at about eight thirty and about five past nine. When you FIFO, you're just on roller bed and it just starts rolling across the room. And I'm like, what Fuck. the fuck's going on? Like, is something happened in the pit or? And then yeah. Sure enough, yeah, Google it and there's an earthquake grid. Where, where was it? Like the East Pilbara. It was, oh, okay. Yeah, it was like 200 k's from where we are in Telfer. Yeah. So, and it was like yeah. five yeah. magnitude or something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 5.6. Crazy. Yeah. So I've got an earthquake experience as yep. well. When it happened, you said like the bed moved. Was that yeah. all you felt? Because I'll, I'll preface that with, with my experience so you get a bit of context. Uh, when I was in Japan... I was in my little government-sponsored hotel room, um, <laughs> sitting on the floor. It was like two days left to go, right? And fucking earthquake. And I've never experienced one before. And this was super quick. It was over in maybe like five seconds, but it felt like the floor was articulated like a snake. Did you experience anything like that or were you just like on your bed and moving? Yeah, oh, probably not exactly <laughs> like that, but it was just, for me, it just felt like the whole thing like being in a little donger yeah <laughs> so, true <laughs> you know this little piece of sort of like plastic is just it felt like someone was just standing there just cl- grabbing either side of it and just shaking it and it's just like all my stuff fell off the like where i have like my toiletries and that all fell over ah. and you don't know and you just sort of was it an earthquake and then yeah. google will tell you it was is there any like um oh s implications of an earthquake in a mine site because especially if you're yeah. underground right so there's like structural stuff under there that might be yeah. compromised were you guys tools down at that point yeah 100 yeah, okay. percent. like we're we're on day shift yeah. so it happened at nine o'clock which is like pretty much the start of sort of night shift and they had they virtually had to stop like standoff from from then until we have like the geotechs until they come uh, out and assess everything i can't tell you exactly what they do yeah they don't not a geotech <laughs> yeah <laughs> we just wait but and then we still had standoff for four hours in the morning so we start at sort of like five thirty. so must have been around there yeah, 9 30 10 o'clock we were allowed to then start Start it'd again. be so much better being in a donger than being underground when that happens. Yeah, I don't work underground. I'm surface, yeah. so on top and in the pit. But yeah, no, nah, don't Not. want to be. A th- you know, you don't want to be a K under underground when that shit is going on. Like one of the guys was telling us last week on site that there's like the thing with like I don't know if it's the ambient light, and they reckon when you're down there and you turn, you switch everything off, you can't see your hand in front of your face. And I'm like, if you just start thinking about that, like, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's like a very, very extreme version of like a um, flotation tank. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sensory deprivation. Yeah. Sensory deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> so we are with Aaron as a Lindsay, who is a friend of mine from way back that um, I did some work for years ago. And yeah. you were involved in the, um, well, you were severely injured in the Bali bombings. Yeah, correct, yeah. And that was 20, 20, 20, 20, 2002. 2002, yeah. 2002 that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 so coming years. up 20 years next year, which is in itself is just mind-blowing. That yeah. We're like, 
must be we must be getting old now at <laughs> some point so I refuse. you can remember things when you were referring to things that yeah. happened 19 years ago you're yeah. like oh yeah i'm fully I'm old. old we're like it's funny at work now we just you become like the older guy on site like you're like we're the dads now so we're like the dad's crew like yeah just like <laughs> oh it just happens and everyone says it happens like that <laughs> and it yeah because you still look in the mirror and you still do normal things yeah. and you're like i'm still i still have no yeah. fucking idea what's going on yeah and then you realize, it makes you realize that like your parents also have no idea what's yeah. going on and everyone's just pretending to have a clue yeah. just trying to keep everything <laughs> trying day by day i saw a meme the other day kids these days are now referring to 1998 as the late 20th century oh <laughs> yes <laughs> you sons of bitches yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's over, bro. I mean, we, we have a fucking yeah. podcast. We've been yeah. yeah. getting rough. <laughs> We've fallen in <laughs> line. So talk to us about, I suppose, the lead up to Bali. You boys, you yeah. were there with like eight of you, right? Yeah. So we're like, to put it up bluntly at first, we are the largest group to all survive. So in the lead up, we're just a normal sort of group of eight mates all into our like bodyboarding like the tension era and all that so we're all just like yep go to bali party surf all day chase women <laughs> as we do mm -hmm. and how old were you at the time 19 so just a little baby we had uh one night where we we flew in and we did the whole bounty foam party mm -hmm. which everyone does and with the headbands yeah, and yeah the, yep. did the whole you know jungle juice thing yeah. like I'd been a million times to Bali, but this was the first one as like a whole group of boys where we're just, you know. It, was it for a reason? Was it, were you guys going over for an end of, it was just like, just no. get all the lads together just, and just go. Yeah, purely just lads, lads trip, just go and surf and then drink bintang all night and yeah. <laughs> have fun. So first night was foam party, like which we'd partied all night. And then we've all obviously woken up hungover, surfed all day and just started drinking. All the boys got the big plastic eskies and filled them with ice and we're drinking in our hotel pool with the beer that we'd bought elsewhere, which as you know, being a hotel, <laughs> that doesn't fly, but they don't, it's been Bali, they didn't give a shit and they yep. just were like, yeah, just have fun and you know, stay safe. So we're just all drinking around the pool all day. It was and, kind of just, just to paint a picture for that time. Like mm -hmm. it was, I think Bali's changed quite a bit over the years. Yeah but it was really just almost chaos when you would go yeah. there back then. Like it was yeah. like, there no was rules. no rules to anything. I don't even think Chappelle Corby had happened yet. It was just a place that you would go and tie one on and just yeah. party basically. You could let loose. Like I remember like that were we were 19 then, but the years before I'd gone when we've just mum and dad and I was 16 and stuff and I was going into bars and, you know, having a beer with dad there, but it's just shit like that doesn't, you know, it <laughs> doesn't happen anywhere really. No. Bali, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you used kind of the, to be the able land to land of the free at yeah. the time. It's crazy to think about it now. It's like I was doing research for this. Yeah. I ended up down a hole with the Bali Nine as well. Yeah. And then Chappelle yeah. Corby, and you're like, prior to 2002, none of that existed. So no. Bali was just Bali. I think it was the first destination you could afford to go to that wasn't yeah, in Perth. It was much, like cheaper than going much. to Sydney. Yeah, 100%. Cheaper than going over east. Bro, and, it would have been cheaper to go to, than going to Roto. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, you could get flights for like $150, $200. Yeah. So. so you guys just partying, just, just hanging out. Yeah. Was it the first night? That, this, the first night was a phone party. Second yep. night was, yeah, was the bomb. So we sort of Fuck, like... The second night. Yeah. Oh, shit, okay. So we haven't even... You didn't even get a chance. We didn't even get a chance <laughs> to have the yeah. lads trip. Yeah. So. How long was the trip meant to be? 10 nights. Yep. So it would have been enough, <laughs> enough time to cause yeah. some damage yeah. over there. But... Um, yeah, with that, with that day, just drinking during, like during the day, drinking around the pool, we met two Japanese girls, which was there, they were flying out the next morning and they were like, just trying to lay low and that. And we're like, no, no, come and, <laughs> you know, come and drink with us. And the things we look back on now is we dragged them out that night and they were involved in the bomb with us. They did survive, but you know, you think if things had gone other ways and we were sort of the ones that would like coaxing them into coming out. Their story is like yeah, a whole nother part, which we'll probably <laughs> dive into later in the piece, but. It's just kind of a bit of a sliding doors moment. Yeah, it's, yeah. It just like as it starts, cause you just seen the footage that I watched again today, it was like, they were ready to just have dinner and go home, but we're like, no, no, come and 
you yeah, know, drink and, it's, it's and all, stuff. So and, that footage is actually on the internet because yeah. you sent it to me today yeah. and it's awesome because you were a child. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you're like sitting with this Japanese girl, like, because you go, were you guys filming? You had a camera? Cause yeah, tension, just tension that, days, that so whole tension day. So we're filming day. everything. So yeah, That's we had so that sick. underwater housings for the surfing and stuff. But yeah, we're just filming everything. So getting drunk and that was just the norm. Of, and it was so cool because I saw that and I was like, you could picture yourself being there yeah because you know like you guys were just letting loose and just having a good time and you got yeah. like this japanese girl on your arm and you're like <laughs> pissed as hell like it's it, it just yeah. it really put me in that yeah. space because i've been in those environments like yet what happened after that is so far out of my yeah. world experience it's just crazy that you can go from from there to there yeah yeah that's that's the whole thing of like as you sit back and look on how the day goes and then all these little things that could change the way it goes or what you've done like hmm. differently like me and another mate smokes like the boys were drunk but we were on another level we we had got our you know duty free bottles out and he's having his uh, bundy op i've got a bottle of jim beam and we've just annihilated those on top of everything and then there's yeah we're just standing there just like absolutely shit faced 19 and years old and you could hold yeah. so much liquor oh, at 19 fuck. like you think about what you drank oh, then if man. you did that now you'd be oh. like yep you're fucking dead drinking all day and then you know drinking a bottle and then we haven't even gone out yet like and then comes to sort of you know getting ready and whatnot i can't even remember like getting dressed and stuff and had you guys planned to go to Sari Club? Was that was that part of the plan, or did you just kind of bar hop and end up there? No, that that was always a plan. We always like over the years that I've been like, we actually were in Paddy's, Paddy's. Mm-hmm. Even though some of the reports will say Sari Club and that, but we were in Paddy's, which was the bar across the road, yep. the smaller bar. So we were in the one where the suicide bomber was, obviously away from the the, the car, car that was on the road. So. We'd always plan, like, we'd always be like, patties, patties, patties. So the boys knew, like, that was that was what was happening after we'd done our bounty the first night. You're just ticking them off. Yeah, just a year ago. So you just rolled into the patties and you were just, just drinking? Yeah, so we'd, like, I remember running, like, we were running down the street because we could walk from where we were staying into, like, we were riding Cooter. So we were just running down, sort of singing footy songs and shit like that, you know, just as a group. And then, yeah, once we, once we got in there, it was just sort of on again, just flowing on and just waiting for chicks to come in and start talking to girls and, and stuff like that and just run amok. But, yes, yeah, it's really, for me, it was just like the memories are just the first little part of it are, are a bit like, you know, a bit foggy because I was so fucking hammered. Yeah. <laughs> so, but as we get like later into it it'll yeah everything's just like fucking crazy so it all comes back at the at the time of the bomb like me and mate chad we were over talking to a couple of swedish girls and then he had left and walked back to where all the boys were and then i was that's the last thing i remember before the bomb goes off right. is that i'm there standing talking to them and then yeah, the bomb goes off. So they so, had a they had a dude with a backpack in Paddy's, right? Correct. And yeah. the aim of the game was to set that off, get everyone out on the street, and then light up the truck, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So they actually did it too quick. Right. Yeah. So they and obviously if they had planned like if they'd done it, it could have been plan, real fucking bad. None of us would be yeah, here. Like we yeah. would all be would have all been dead thinking about it like that you're just like fucking so talk us through paddies like you're talking to swedish girls yeah the bomb, pa- bomb goes off yeah like the way paddies is set up is at the back of it there's like a little dj booth a dance floor and then the bar is in the middle and then you got sort of like walkways around the bar to, the, to exit as you walk in there there's the um you know like the big iron sort of fences with like the like spears on yeah, top of them yeah so I'll tell you this one quickly. As soon as I woke up, like after the bomb, yep. this is what I remember, is um, I actually thought I did like impaled myself on those. Like that was because- Like I'd trying have, to jump over or something? Yeah, like I just had no memory. Like I have no memory from the actual blast, but that was my thing. I thought I'd actually impaled myself or something on yeah. that. But I was at the back, like near the dance floor, near the DJ booth sort of thing, talking to these girls boys were sort of to the side of the bar and from that 
the explosion goes off and the boys obviously freak out and they're all alive um, at this stage. <laughs> and Wait, let me pause you. Yeah. I'm Sorry, I'm going to do this a lot. The explosion goes off. No one in this room has ever been in a bomb. Um, most people listening has never experienced anything like that. Do you remember that moment? Like, do you remember what that felt like? Do you remember hearing it? Do you no, remember seeing I've, anything? You I've got totally nothing at all from that. that. I'm yeah. totally black. Yeah. yeah. So just, you're just kind of standing there and then it's black screen. Yeah, the boys, there were two of them that jumped over the bar, into the bar, and one of them, Morgs, he'd never been on an international holiday. And he said to one of the boys, the other boys, Sarah, he's grabbing him. He's like, is this normal? What's going on? Like, we always laugh about it because yeah. he's just like, yeah. what's going on? Shaking him and shit. Like, wow. he's like, no, nah, man, this, I don't know what's going on. He's like, well, I think we're under attack or something. Like, Sano was like launching himself. He's like how... The he's muscle, massive, he's yeah. the massive, yeah. the muscle guy yeah. of the group, you know, super fit. And um, so he's like ran out and like launched over like double high fences and shit, and just jumped over across the roof. Well, so he's just bounced, yeah, and just was like, <laughs> I'm out of here, yeah, yeah. Got, probably smart, yeah. <laughs> probably the next stage of things is the boys actually get out of there. It's it's two stories as well, so the top story was closed, but. As they get out, I don't know, no one can say, I'll say how you imagine a bomb, like the whole top level is completely on fire and starting to fall down. So the boys get out front and get together and they're like, as is not here, like we've got to find him. So they all run back inside risking their own lives. Because that was an inferno. Like if you see the things, it's just, it's just pure fire. Yeah. And like I said, the top story is coming down, like the pillars. When you see the aftermath of it, there is nothing left yeah. of the top story. It's yeah. completely. So they come back in and they find me underneath two dead bodies at the back. And I was face down, I used to have bleached blonde hair and it was completely black and red from blood and soot and everything. And they just thought I was dead. So they were like, We've just, we've got to get his body out of here. Like at least get him out. And they dragged me out. And um, my best mate, Chad, was fully punching the wall. Like he goes, I didn't know what to sort of do. Like yeah. that was his frustrations. He was just like hitting the wall. And then the next minute he goes to pick me up again. And he puts his four fingers up to his knuckle inside the back of my head. <laughs> Because I'm cut from ear to ear on the back of my neck. And his fingers go fully in. And he's, we always joke about it. He's like, I've touched your brain and shit. <laughs> a ventriloquist like, My dummy. mate has been inside of me. <laughs> Four <laughs> fingers deep. <laughs> so you can sort of picture things from that. Obviously, I'm like a dead weight. It's taken them four or five of them to actually carry me out of there. They had people with like no legs and that was still alive trying to pull on him like to grab like help me help me was and that after the first the the backpack bomb not the no that one? was after everything oh, after everything after okay, that yeah, yeah. the yeah. whole lot yeah. had gone so from there they get me out onto the main road in You're front of fully unconscious by the way fully yeah, unconscious yeah. they think i'm dead yeah and then as they start walking me up the road they sort of like drop me that's when I woke up. This is my first memory of going from just talking to some girls to <laughs> is everything is in chipmunk voice and they are screaming just like, you know, like they've won the grand final. They're just like, I just remember them standing over me, just arms in the air, just going over there and just going, he's fucking alive. Like absolutely losing that shit. And in chipmunk voice, I can, that's the best way of describing it. I can't think of anything else it was just fucking yeah crazy just chipmunks everywhere going on like my ears had been blown blown to bits like i couldn't couldn't hear like it was that when you see it on movies when they portray in the war movies like when the bombs like when there's been bombings and then everyone's ears just you know that tinnitus, after, uh, the yeah. Tinnitus. yeah it's just like yeah. Ding. Yeah. that's what i live with yeah, yeah since then and it's wow. fucking mayhem but sometimes <laughs> but you just learn to live with it but so you just imagine that noise and then it's like the chipmunk voice is just yeah, going like yeah 
You've got no conscious memory of Sweden to being woken up on the floor, right? Yeah. Yeah. As I yeah. said before, with the whole impaling thing, with yeah. the, that's what crossed my mind because to me, they just looked all fine. Yeah, true. Like, okay. So, yeah, it was just, it was mind blowing. I was like, like, what the fuck have I done? done like, because yeah. I was so hammered before. Mm. I was like, oh, I've done something. I've tripped over and like, you know. So you haven't even registered that a bomb's gone off. No. Nah. I still don't think I understood until like the next day from me sort of waking up and then that sort of thing. Then they went into overdrive of like, we've got to get him to the hospital. And same again, you see the old footage of everybody just running everywhere. There's no way you're going to get a car and shit like that. So they were like running down the street with me, carrying me like that. I couldn't move, obviously. And they eventually grab... Uh, like the old BMOs they used to call them the vans yeah. they grab one and the guys in they just sort of like took over the van threw me in the back and then I just this is another like real distinct memory is as I've, I've they've laid me down I'm just uh, looking at Sano and I kept saying to him I was like sit me up sit me up and he's like you can't sit up you can't sit up we can't move you it was so clear and I was like I just was swearing at him I was like fucking sit me up I want to see what is going on and he's like we can't move you we can't move you and then he says to me as well is that I I went out of it again then and I just completely collapsed again and then yeah next sort of thing from that is having people run along the side of the van with us because it's barely moving and we're just like I just I can remember seeing looking out the window just seeing like a little Balinese friend that we'd met that day like seeing him run along with us like just things like that are just so distinct and yeah like burnt into your memory yeah almost. just yeah. little things that probably don't mean much but like yeah. for me it's like seeing those things they're my, my full yeah distinct memories. the way that i like uh verbalize it is almost like being in a disco when you see a strobe light so you get those snapshots in mm -hmm. time almost if you slowed it down you yeah. like remember this remember this remember this but it doesn't all really make sense yeah but kind of join to together. me yeah yeah to yourself you're, you're like exactly, oh you're yeah. putting it all together yeah. and then yeah, and especially talking like with you guys is starting to bring up more yeah. as I start to talk yeah. about it. I've tried to write down a heap of notes <laughs> to help me. So they've got you in the back of a van and you're in and out of consciousness. The aim yeah. of the game is, I suppose, to get you to the hospital, right? Yeah. So, uh, Sorry, um, two secs. Uh, you said you got hit in the back of the neck. You got split. Yeah. So you got hit by shrapnel? Yeah, shrapnel. Yeah. And, and now has has it actually like gone through or has yeah. it just hit you and cut you? Like what's no, the wound it's, like? It's actually it's actually paralyzed me. Yeah. So they've had it's gone in and like pressed on my spinal cord without cutting it. So, so the shrapnel is still in you. It's still at this point. At, yeah, yeah, and it still is today. Oh wow! <laughs> Fuck. Okay. <laughs> Some of it is too close they that take they it can't out. take yeah. it out. So the injuries, I can go into the injuries now, or like yeah. At this so let's let's roll with what was what was going on. Yeah. So you're, yeah. you're you're the you're the guy, the Balinese guy, you've yeah. met, is running alongside you. Yeah, yeah. He's run along. He's directing traffic. So he's like getting people out of the way, just telling them where to go to where he knows there's a hospital, which is. Sangrila Hospital and my first memories of getting out like they put me on obviously just like a bed and like out front of there there was literally blood everywhere and this is not I haven't even got in there there was just a absolute chaos and then I just remember seeing just blood and sort of people without arms and stuff like that like raw as you can imagine and yeah from there i think it's only about 20 or 30 minutes where i'm sort of out there just on a bed and i just you feel like you're sort of by yourself because there's no one there and i don't know what's going on and eventually i get taken in to this waiting room and this is where it's probably the stuff that has that um like troubled me for years of what i saw in that room was the whole yet again the whole thing the walls white white tiled walls and they're like blood to the roof like i just remember seeing that 
a guy, a guy without an arm laying next to me. And then probably the, this is the craziest thing I think about the whole story on my, my story, part of it, with it was I was talking to what I would say probably like a 40, 45-year-old, I'll say mum. I'm talking to her, trying to, you know, like ask her what's going on and then we're just talking but like they're not talking about it. It was so weird. Like I can't even explain what we were even talking about but as I'm talking to her she dies as she's talking to me with eyes open and for years and years and years I've dreamt about seeing her face I've tried to find who her family was to you know to say that I was like with her in the end and like you know she was fine like I was talking to her and stuff like that but seeing her face like still see it right now as I'm talking to you like it's just something that you never ever like and it's it hasn't scared me in a way it's just I don't know I'm just aware I don't know I think she's sort of like with me and stuff like that like just because I guess I was in a way helping her at the end like we didn't even know what we're talking about I cannot tell you but it was this weird thing where like no I couldn't hear anything else but I was could hear her you were just like comforting each other in some way yeah but i didn't know she was dying either so it's just that's so yeah. insane man and it's interesting yeah. because we are so sheltered from that you know seeing physically the life drain out of someone's eyes in front of you mm. that's something our grandparents probably had to definitely had to deal with their grandparents had to deal with but sort of our parents generation not so much for those people that do have that experience, I can imagine it must be a very like just trauma, life mm. shaping experience. Something yeah. that you've obviously held with you for fucking 20 years. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know. I try not to get like it. It did haunt me a bit at first because being 19, I was like, how do I fucking deal with this? How like I just keep seeing her face. Like every time I shut my eyes or just see her like and talk, she's just talking and like, it's just, was something that I really and really battled with and the funny, not the funny thing, but the weird thing is probably I don't even know if my parents even know this side of the story or most of the boys, I don't even think they know it. I haven't really, my wife now, she knows about it, but yeah, I don't think I've really sort of kept that close to me as sort of like my little thing with her and Mm -hmm. you know it was always I'm still trying to find her family like I don't I can see her but to go through the people that died I can't pick her out of the photos Mm -hmm. like that which was you know because I've I've done that numerous times and I still just can't so yeah it's a weird one but yeah memory is so unreliable as well when it comes to to faces and stuff like that yeah and man I mean the, the trauma of that happening you just got to remember you were 19 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you're fucking it's 19 years old. Fucking mind-blowing now. Yeah. When you sit back now and I was like, at 19, you think you know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting back now, I'm like, man, you just, we're just, we were just little babies and like all eight of us. Like we all went through it. We're all like thriving now. Like we're still, all, you know, like it's just crazy that that this story, <laughs> like, you know, it's it's mental. Like the way... We are so lucky. Was the conditions of the hospital at the time registering with you or were you just like that didn't even come into your, your brain? Yeah, like as, a, as I said, like we've the filth of the blood and that was mm. just fucking next level. I've never seen anything like it. Like I've worked in some shit fucking yeah. work sites, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> work site toilets and shit, but I've never seen anything like that. The way... Like I said, the walls were white, but they were red. Yeah. And just the floors and that, you could just hear people walking. And then it was the dead bodies that were in there. Like, yeah, you can't. <laughs> and that was triage. Yeah. That was just like, that's where they were just putting people yeah. to try and figure out who to yeah. look after next. Yeah. So it was and you're paralyzed. Like, yeah. So I'm paralyzed. I can't even move. So I'm laying there virtually, which the way it was slumped was my neck was to the right. That's why I was able to like see her and talk to this lady. 
So, and then I couldn't move from that. So that's probably why she's also in vision is because I've just stared at her for like yeah. 20 minutes. Just, yeah, I don't know, the filthiest that you can see these white walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll throw all really like, and the way I can explain it too is it's really black, black yeah. blood. Like yeah. it's not yeah, ketchup on the wall. Uh -huh. It's This stuff is like black and it's, yeah. How long is it until you have someone like a familiar face or even a doctor or a nurse come up to you and explain to you what's going on? Like what's the next steps from here yeah. for you? So then the next step is I went in for surgery. Whilst I'm in surgery, all the news obviously breaks and the boys that had made it back to the hotel and whatnot had to then, you know, back then we didn't have that mobiles wasn't mobile yeah, no. yeah, like no. we did but we would yeah. leave them at home yeah we yeah, wouldn't no them. roaming and shit no, no fuck that no. it'd be so expensive at that stage too is they had to make the calls back home and um like so my best mate chad our dads are best mates <laughs> so pete which is chad's dad asks him over the phone like he like tells him about me and then he's like what's you know what's Azza? he's like i don't think he's gonna make it and fuck so that's his dad and then my dad's there like you know what's going on and he's like he couldn't he didn't have the guts to tell him that i wasn't you know gonna make it and he was just like oh he's you know he's injured but he's you know it's gonna be all good and whatnot which just yeah that that i didn't actually know about that until i think about two years ago yeah and pete i was back working and i worked with pete and he told me and i was like fuck that just yeah you didn't you know like two best mates you, you can't say it like because it's so yeah. like yeah and they've both got sons that are stuck in this yeah and none of them know what's going on as mm -hmm. a father you know you're a yeah. father now that must yeah. that that must be just terrifying incompre yeah. incomprehensible no you can't yeah. you can't no nah, you and, and that's just the, the, the complete lack of any control yeah, on yeah. Their side. That's, yeah. No, that's right they don't know where i am they don't know if i'm alive if i've made it through this surgery or even if i made it five minutes after they and left your friends me, can't come in they don't know where i am mm. so they the next did they take you to the hospital and yeah then and then they had to leave yeah they had to get out yeah. so it goes through the whole of the next day until i th think three thirty, four o'clock in the afternoon the following day that the boys found me in the hospital they wouldn't they weren't letting people in and they were like uh, d trying to describe me and they're like you know he's got like the bleach blonde hair and the way they found me was um, that day I had no tattoos then. I had went and got a stupid fucking temporary <laughs> tattoo. And they're like, the ladies at the door or whatever, they doctors or whatever, were just like, oh, oh, has he got a tattoo on his arm? And they're like, yes, he got a fucking temporary tattoo that day. Like, and that was the way that they were then allowed to come in. And that was the way they found me. So they could identify you with that. Oh, and just while I remember too, yeah. the way they actually found me in Paddy's at the bomb was the old, I don't know if you guys remember the old punk belts. Like yeah, with the, with the, the studs. With the studs. Yeah. yeah, so I had one of those on, the old denim shorts. The way they found it was it hit Shero's eye, which was like just like somehow the light hit that, the buckle. And he was Fuck. like, that's how I found you was the punk belt. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's another. That is insane. Yeah. If they had enough, you'd just be dead. Yeah, if the the whole end of the thing is i owe my life to them like without my mates i wouldn't be here 100 percent. there's no way i would have yeah i was right underneath you know like and then everything would have just collapsed Claps and, on you yeah and not to mention even if you had been dragged out at that point you got infection and shit to deal with the quicker they got you out the better for sure yeah yeah for, so. for them to go back in yeah i mean everyone you, you can think you would do that mm. I've had until so, you're in that yeah. fucking moment like oh. that's it's brave as fuck it's just yeah. insane yeah. and yeah. I believe like one of them it said five, was it five of you got yeah, they, medals they all got medals they all got um, uh, bravery medals and then one of them Kenner's he got a MBE from the Queen fuck really yeah. <laughs> member of the British Empire yeah oh, fucking hell yeah, yeah we got we went to like the full service really the, yeah Sick. it was fucking crazy but yeah just another thing that just pops into my mind yeah. Yeah. Hey, did they go back they and, yeah. and they saved other people as well yeah so there's there's that there's that other story as well is one of the boys Bones he was the one he really should be fucking knighted for what he did so he carried the two japanese girls 
and our mate Smokes out. Like, he's carried two women and another guy. He's dragged them out. Like, Fuck. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. The two girls that you were drinking with at the beginning yeah. of the night. So, he's another part of the reason while they're, you know, while they're mm. alive. So That is insane, man. You don't know, like, you don't know what's in you until those mm. moments. Like, and, like, so thankful that most people will never yeah. have to know. But you can't know. Mm. And, like, the fact that they've just gone right we're going back in it's a simple concept yeah but like just looking at the the yeah. footage it's like there's no way to go like you there's, there's no way to go it's it's nah. just a it's just a flame yeah you're going into a pure pure fireball and it's yeah everything's crumbling and yeah. the thing that really i suppose illustrated it for me was seeing that van on its roof with its tires melted clean off it, all of those aluminium rims buckled, mm. the force that that must have generated to send it to the other side of the road yeah. on its roof, fucking massive. Yeah, you just now you don't you don't remember. No, any I, of that, I can right? give you like the boys' yeah, sort of yeah. um, perspective on that. Like the way they explained it to me was just like like literally thought they were under attack like the first one goes and then they just get thrown and so they're they just like lifted, like they yeah they got thrown from where they were so after like everything like after surviving and everything the federal police they are putting together where everyone was and when we explain where we were myself i'm the actual closest person i was virtually standing side by side with the suicide bomber and the way the blast went was the boys were to the to like the other side like i'm standing right next to him and then just say they are on the other side so that's the way they've been sort of protected by it the blast went forward yeah and it's like yeah thrown me and yeah done what it did to me everyone that's sort of in front of us cops the real brunt of 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 everything so you imagine eight guys in this thing condensed room and we all are managed to survive in the end of the story being that close yeah i was literally the closest person to the suicide bomber so my little claim to fame (laughs) motherfucker dude this is the craziest fucking story i've ever heard this is the first and probably last time i'll ever do this in depth when you asked me i was like fuck i'll do it for you 100 percent. but there's not many people i would you know sit down and do this with but well, we had yeah. this conversation so I, I actually didn't really know anything about this and mm-hmm. i was doing some work for your clothing store lyg and we would yeah. we got we become pretty good mates through yeah. doing that and then yeah. we we were doing the signage and yeah. you just started telling me this story and i was just like <laughs> fucking doing the signs i'm just like tears are <laughs> coming out of my eyes i was like what the hell yeah and I think it, was, it still it just stuck with me forever as being like it's so fucking unlikely that you're here. Yeah. It's in. It's beyond unlikely. Yeah. It's just crazy. The boys would always come into hospital. This is after everything and just say stuff like just, man, you're here. Like you've got to like cure cancer or something. Cause what you've just been through and survived. They're like, we saw you. We were like, he's not going to make it. Like the next day where the boys have finally made contact and found me that I'm alive. The news then travels back to mum and dad like it finally gets back that, that you're, you're okay you're okay like he's okay and well you're alive yes yeah. I'm, yeah i'm not i'm not okay. not okay he's not okay but he's alive so being a parent i cannot fucking imagine and i don't ever want to imagine like getting that phone call oh, right fuck and in another country like let oh. alone just in australia and you're or 19 oh, yeah like I just put, it's hard to not think about it. Like this morning when I found that old interview and stuff and I showed my son, he's only three and he heard me doing the stupid voice with the girls yeah. Yeah. and he's like, that's my dad. And it made me cry because I was like, going to have to tell him that story. And it's just like being a parent just fucks you up and emotionally with those sorts of things. Like obviously not everyone's survived, a, you know, a terrorist bombing, but there's those things that, just just way way as soon as you become parent you become those things that test your own mortality suddenly become a lot more like real because 
there's yeah. someone else relying on you now. It's yeah. not just you. Yeah. You know, I know you boys from back in the day and, mm-hmm. you know, the motocross and the yeah. way you drank and the way you partied. Like, there yeah. was zero fucks given for tomorrow. Like, yeah. you guys sent it. Yeah. And all those boys, um, yeah. especially on the dirt bikes. Yeah. Then Fuck. to be brought back to some sort of reality by a, by a, by a check like that, it's mm. got to be fucking pretty crazy. Yeah. I think it probably made us go even harder because... We just knew, like, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. And I know it's so fucking cliche, all uh-huh. those things of, you know, YOLO and shit. But when you do get into those situations and at the end and you're just like, fuck it, I can literally be, I can, I don't want to say this, but you can drive your car and be fucking wiped off the road. And, you know, so you just got to try and live hard and just, yeah. I think that's the but, best way to do it, though. I think yeah. th- the reality is, man, there's probably it's just it's going to affect the way that you live your life after that 100 percent. it's it completely shaped my life still has like yep. it shapes the way i parent my kids and you know and who i am i just everyone says man you just you never you're never angry you're never upset like always positive i'm like yeah you just there's no point like it's perspective right yeah that's exactly <laughs> right that's the word the yeah. big word yeah. yeah that is a that is a very hard yeah l- lesson in perspective man yeah people get upset about the smallest fucking stupidest thing and it's like it doesn't shit like that doesn't bother me so it's yeah, a good dude it's, it's not awesome. a bad way yeah. because i think just to be here speaking to us and just to have had a perspective shift in life anyway mm. at 19 years old it's that is just <laughs> Like, I can barely even talk, man. Like, 19 years old and that happening and then just going... Well, you think you're fucking invincible at 19, right? Yeah, well, you really think you're invincible you're at legit. 19 if you've been blown like, up. <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, you're basically like Superman. Fucking like, no. We did, we did probably think that afterwards. You yeah. Know, being 19, surviving that, telling girls that. I'm just like, yeah, f- fuck, yeah. So have you ever survived a terrorist bombing? <laughs> but, <nah. laughs> yeah, as it's... The news has finally got back and as I said, yeah, with being a parent and stuff is I cannot imagine what mum and dad were going through and my sis- my two sisters, like the the way I can paint the picture is the way they've told me is mum and dad's house was always like the party house where ev- like we were just, you know, that's where everyone would come. So on that next few days is there's like 50 60 people there people just bringing food just like yeah just that's community man. yeah it would have just been a surreal experience for everyone but yeah. people just moved together yeah like I, I lost my dad a couple of years ago and yeah. when that was the final sort of days mm-hmm. there was like nine of us and we just sat in the living room like watching yeah. tv together and like he was in the in the other room like he was unconscious mm-hmm. but that sort of migration of everyone to one point just to be yeah. there for each other and it's not even yeah. spoken about it's yeah, just you're it's just that, there yeah. and it's like mm-hmm. i don't want to be anywhere else yeah just, absolutely nothing else matters right like yeah. you think about 60 people's lives and they've got mm. fucking things going on like yeah. think about trying to organize like a barbecue now that's right yeah you can't get two people there i think that's like such an amazing thing about human nature as well yeah yeah, it's it's crazy just to to try and imagine that like everybody there and just it's like the home base, the fort they you know they built for all phone calls and stuff for coming in and out of there and and every bit of news and stuff like that. So you stayed in the hospital. Your friends found you. Yeah. So my you were still at this point paralyzed. Yeah, I'm paralyzed. And when they first get to me, I have tubes to help me breathe and stuff, so I can't talk either. So I'm seeing them and I'm still like trying to say what fucking happened, what is going on. Like, and then being through like that night with the lady and it's just still so weird because no one said to me, there's been a bomb. It's not until, yeah, till they rip the tube out and then I can finally talk. So they're like, when they take these fucking tubes out, you've got to keep talking. <laughs> And as they're pulling it out and the my thing was like, what fucking happened? <laughs> like, and, yeah, so I'm still, yeah. And then eventually the doctor is, he goes, yeah, there's been, there's been a bomb and stuff. We don't know heaps yet, like, but we're thinking it's been a terrorist bombing. So from sort of that, um, I have like, I think they were volunteers. Like, so obviously the hospital is just 
mayhem still but it's clean now and like i'm in like a little bit of a ward thing and you know i've got doctors and shit everywhere but there were these i think it was three or four ladies and i just kept talking to them like talking, just shit. Jo- talking yeah. shit and yeah. joking with them and stuff like that saying i'm gonna take them out for dinner and stuff like once we get out of here and you know just sort of yeah just that's just, so interesting because yeah. when i got stabbed in the face i got, I got glass when i was like 19 um so, sort of same age as you yeah. had the leopold and cut me all the way down my side of my face and then he stabbed me in the neck with it as well fuck no that's a whole yeah. story but <laughs> went went to the fucking hospital and i was a bit pissed as well talking shit to the nurse going like oh so you come here often or <laughs> she's like i fucking work here yeah. <laughs> stitch up morons like you but it's funny you kind yeah. of resort to humor almost in situations yeah. like that it must be must be just in defense thing yeah maybe. defense yeah. mechanism yeah. where you're just deflecting what's actually yeah. going on by yeah. just making jokes and, and was she having a yarn with you or well, this is. I'll go into this part mm. now while I'm here with these ladies. So, so these ladies are like loving chatting to each other. Like they're obviously dealing with seeing all this shit too. So, um, and they're nurses. Yeah, uh, they're volunteers. So, the one of them is. I'm pretty sure one of them is a nurse, and then the others were just ladies that lived in Bali and were just there to just knew they needed to help and stuff i'm pretty sure i can't exactly say but uh, the first anniversary we all get flown to bali for a yeah for a like a big um big commemoration thing over there and like all the prime ministers there and stuff like that were you sketchy about going back at all we were but we sort of we just we made a like little pack like all our families got to come everybody got to come so you had support at least yeah yeah yeah. so we all went it was all high security like and then so after the whole formal sort of thing like that we're all standing around and then i have these two ladies run up to me and they're just like shaking me like just like like eyes wide open just like freaking out yeah just and then they're just sort of like, you're alive, you made it, you made it. And I still didn't, I couldn't picture who they were. And it ends up being this lady, Kim, she was the main medical volunteer. And she went on to, in that year, she wrote a book and not knowing if I'd survived. And she's put me in the book and under like, she made a name up Soon for him. me. Yeah, yeah. like a, it was Aiden my, yeah. was my name in the book. And yeah, there's, they're like losing their shit. She's like, I've written Holy a book and you you know, you're in it. And it says in there later in that, like that, they weren't sure, like, you know, if, if I made it. Yeah. 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 So, and there's, there is an actual photo in there from me in bed with the ladies no way. doing their bit. So I'll just, I'll pass yeah. it over to you yeah. now. And obviously like, I have no idea of this fucking thing. And then they get me the book and I'm just like, what the fuck? This there's is like another of part of the it. story. Yeah. I was like, and there's all like, yeah, bits through it, man. That is well, just uh, fucking. They, they were white ladies, right? Yes. Did I say that wrong? Yeah, no, yeah, they yeah. were right. Yeah, so um, they, they've flown over or something? Or were they no, in no, Bali? No, they, they lived in Bali. Okay. So like expats and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Um, two, there's those four of them all up. Two of them still live there. And to live over east. And so only last year was I able to make contact with them all again. No like shit. Like in the last year. So I've managed to, because I lost the book between getting divorced and stuff like that. Yeah. And moving states and shit like that. I lost everything. And that was one thing that I was like, I need that fucking book. Yeah. Like that's, you know, that's crazy. Like to me. That What's whole, the book called? in the arms of the angels okay so yeah it's just um another yeah just finally like touching base with them now and i message them like so much now like it's crazy yeah to, to what they did for me like they always say like you know they didn't do anything but they just always kept my like spirits high laughing and stuff like that and that's then, super important yeah it is so it's they, amazing that you mm. didn't just go into like a i mean not to say that you didn't eventually I'm, I'm not sure but to be at that time to be like cognizant and to be like 
upbeat. It's like your mm. your soul or like whatever the essence of you is yeah. is literally just there. It's like yeah. your it's almost autopilot. Yeah, you know, and you're talking to people. Mm-hmm. You're having a laugh and stuff like that. It's like you're fucking paralyzed. Are you think? Are you mm. sitting there going like, "Do I? Is this me now?" Doesn't even cross. Doesn't register, doesn't register then at all. It registers later, but yeah, not then at all. Don't even. I didn't. I wasn't even thinking about trying to get home. The funny thing was, I was like, "Where's my fucking wallet? Where is my wallet?" <laughs> Like, you know, like I've come over here with like, yeah, like my $1,500 for 10 days. I'm like, where's my fucking wallet? Like, have the boys got my wallet? And then that's what was, you know, like, I don't know what it is. It just was like. That's a defense mechanism. Yeah. That definitely. is your brain going, let's yeah. focus on something. Yeah. So that we don't focus on everything right now. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's it's insanely overwhelming. The, yeah. the craziest thing is that your parents back home would have been dealing with so much more than you were, even yeah. though you were in it. Cause you're yeah. just like, eh, I can't deal with this. So I'm just going to think about my wallet. Or yeah. It's like an yeah. automatic, automatic thing. It must be. Cause yeah. you just, yeah. Cause Couldn't, you don't get a chance, right? No. You know, because you can't take everything in when there's no. that level of like tra- of trauma, when you're seeing something so crazy, yeah. your mind does shut down. It does you a favor. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Glad it did then. Yeah. It obviously does eventually happen where oh, I yeah, it do. Crack yeah. After yeah. That and you have it to cracks. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But one thing the, I haven't asked is like, what was pain like at this point? I didn't have any pain because no. I couldn't feel anything. Okay. Like, oh, with, like, okay. With, yeah. yeah, no, it's yeah, just yeah. Don't mean, I don't mean that, but I'm no, just, no, yeah, no, like no. With I, the I whole being paralyzed, I yeah. have no, no pain at all. So yeah, it's, it, uh, I guess maybe that's probably why I'm also laughing and stuff like that being is jovial. I don't have yeah. any pain. pain. Yeah. So and they probably gave you some pain meds and they, stuff. So you're yeah. high as shit. You're yeah, like, high as, yeah, you know, would have been for sure. 19. Yeah. <laughs> smacked up with morphine. Oh, there's <laughs> nothing like the morphine that I had uh, in when once I do eventually get back to Royal Perth is morphine is fucking hell. That stuff <laughs> is amazing. There is nothing like that. <laughs> it's incredible. I am unfortunately allergic to morphine. They've switched mm. everyone off it and they're going with like fucking um, ketamine now. Yeah, Fuck. well, they were when I went back in for my knee surgery. It was um, the one that is killing all the rappers. Fentanyl. Fentanyl. Yeah, that's yeah. synthetic morphine. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, I bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> Killed Michael Jackson, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Killed Prince, bro. <laughs> Mac Miller. Oh, but that ketamine shit. My my stepmom's uh, just come out of like cancer, mm-hmm. um, and they dose them up on ketamine. And wow. I don't know, I don't know about you guys. I've personally never had ketamine, but I've heard <laughs> stories of people who have had, and uh, that shit renders you pretty fucking useless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've heard those stories too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, mental. So still, I'm still in Bali, and it's still, it's the next day, as we we're saying in the afternoon, and then the what? A, well, I'm sitting with the boys. Is they're talking about how they're going to get me back to Perth so it starts to starts to circulate that they're getting a Hercules in which is you know the big emergency fucking it's like that's the next part of the story where it goes to the following day so two days later is laying on uh, the Bali tarmac and having emergency surgery because I'm starting my organs are failing losing too much blood internal bleeding sorry like flatline on the tarmac there and brought back there so what so you died <laughs> on the barley tarmac. they say yeah i'm clinically dead on yeah. the tarmac so your heart stopped yeah did they zap you back into life or yeah. was it cpr'd zapped Zap, yeah okay so so you have whoa wait wait, wait. this is fucking it was crazy. a near that, that was a death experience it, and there's still for, more for, for the idiots in the room <laughs> Me, um, you're lying. Spell it out for me. You're lying on the tarmac. You're conscious. Yeah, and you get, then you're getting wheeled onto a onto a thing. Your I'm, shit starts to fail. Are you? I'm actually on the floor. On the on, on the, the floor. Yeah, concrete. I got that. Yeah. Are you hmm. aware that shit's going bad? No. Or, okay, not so you at just all. you just pass out. Yeah, pass out, and then I'm brought back, and I've been told that. I don't, you know, right. don't have any fucking memory. You've got no memory of that point. No white lights, no, no. going to Jesus stuff. No. And they, okay. like the doctors even said that I was clinically dead when the boys found me in 
Fuck, the so bomb. you died twice in three days? So, right. According to them, I don't know. I can't tell you because yeah. I didn't see shit. Yeah. <laughs> so they dropped you back to life. Yeah. Right? It's like they gave you <laughs> yeah. that shock by dropping you. Yeah. <laughs> So wow! So yeah, on the on the tarmac. So they yeah. they actually did the um, yeah. what's it called the a defib. De- oh yeah, the clear defibrillator. Yeah. defibrillator. Yeah. Supposedly, yeah. yeah. So and then once I'm on the Hercules, so we're flying back to Darwin. So we finally leave Bali two days later. Flying back to Darwin as the first because I don't I don't think they can go much further than that. Or I don't know. It was their first part to get to the nearest hospital yep. on Australian soil during that flight. I don't, I don't think many people have been on a Hercules, but it is the loudest fucking noise you can imagine. Yeah. You can't, you cannot hear anything outside of, you know, like you can't hear people's voices. They are the Land Rover Defender of the mm. of the air. Yeah, I'm pretty the Hercules yeah. is the yeah. fucking plane that they used to drop tanks off yeah. into yeah. war zones. Yeah. It's got like a loading bay. The yeah, fucking yeah. Things. it's virtually like a shell. Exactly. And yeah. There ain't no insulation. You, you just got permanent tinnitus, and then you're on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After, so after having just died. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So no. it's just it's a fucking Fuck. pretty chilled Twice. out flight. Yeah. <laughs> and then so on the Hercules, I'm I have I'm having air to help me breathe, and my my mom masks like slips off my face after a few minutes like I start struggling to breathe and it's only the young little 15 year old girl who's next to me who's now one of my just like my little sister she is the one that alerts like because I'm like struggling I can't move I'm just laying no there one can hear you. no no one yeah. can hear me she just sees me like she could see that I was struggling so she alerts them and then finally get me back to you know, breathing again, like with, you know, I just think that could have been another part where you could have died. If she there. doesn't do yeah. that, and then I just all of a sudden just stop breathing. They don't know because, like, obviously they're walking down and stuff, looking at us, but there's just there's no way of knowing without what she does. So, and that's young Megan who she was fairly burnt, and she's one of sort of like the I'll say this, she'll hear it, the high profile um, survivors, and you not know, uh, Yoni's friend Megan. Yes, yes, yeah, it is. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Meg's um, Bazio, Bazio. Yeah, Megan yeah, yeah, Bazio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She's out. like my little sister. I love her. Oh, good you know, right. love her to death. She's. I'll do anything for her. We end up finding out we're from High Wycombe, the same suburb and stuff. And like, yeah, I'll, I'll go into her stuff like a little bit later, but that's where her part, that part comes in. And, you know, the, that's our first little interaction with each other. So from there, from that, we get to Darwin and that's where I have my first contact with my family is my dad is flown up there with like our close family friend. And so, yeah, the moment of seeing dad when he walks through at Darwin, that's when it sort of starts clicking that something's gone, you know, like he's flown now. I'm like, you know, like we're still piecing everything together, but you know, that's when it starts. You see your dad cry and stuff like that. It's not, yeah. That brings you back real fast, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I have again, more surgery there in Darwin, which is, you know, I don't have many memories of that apart from seeing my dad. Like I wasn't there very long. I think it was only like a matter of like six or eight hours. Oh, okay. Just for yeah. surgery and stuff. And then then finally get back to Perth. And it's, I don't know, by this stage, it's probably four or five, six days later. Then finally get back to Perth. And then I'm in intensive care in Royal Perth for 10 days, like fighting for my life. This is just just not nothing's working so still very much paralyzed at this point yeah Yeah. completely paralyzed now in this 10 day period are you starting to kind of think about your own situation yeah yeah this is where i was saying where it finally hits me yeah and i'm virtually can't move can't talk like i was oh no i could talk but uh, not after the first after the first couple days but then i just always remember like i was just asking to die because I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be in a wheelchair. I don't want to be that guy. And that was weird. I just kept saying as well. I was like, I just want to be a normal person who goes to work. <laughs> that was always yeah. in mind. I just want to go to work. I don't want to be in a fucking wheelchair. I don't want to be, I'd rather just die. But I wish I could tell myself, like obviously I do, you know, push through and get on with it. But 
it's if I could tell myself just don't be fucking stupid, even mm. if you were going to be in a wheelchair, mm. it doesn't fucking you know that ain't the end of shit. So it isn't. No, nah, you can yeah. drag yourself out. Yeah. Did you have moments in that time where you're just like alone and you're thinking about that stuff? Yeah, at at night when everyone would go home because through the day, like people would come in just all day, just every hour. I think it was someone different and like mum and dad would always be there but then it was someone someone every hour different like my aunties and stuff like that and yeah it was just and then at night time that's where the next little part of the story with Megan comes in is um we actually were together in intensive care and then we have this little fucking just stupid story but it's just for me and her and she was like hey what's your name and she reckons this is like she reckons I just put up my finger and I was like I'm Aaron Lindsay <laughs> like number one and I was like yeah she rec- yeah so we're in there together and she's severely burnt for a young 15 year old we're no 19 shit. she's 15 I hope she won't mind me going into her little part of the story as well but she uh, she lost her dad there he was in the bomb with her on our Bali anniversaries every year, we always get together and we have a shot of Jack Daniels, his drink. Which yeah. Is, yep. So, yeah, it's like for her being 15, it was just, we had this sense of like, we were her like older brothers, like a sort of like, we didn't know her as a, from Bar of Soap before that. Mm. So we just had to take her under our wing and stuff. So she became instantly our little sister and, you know, Imagine being 15 and having the majority of your body covered in those kinds of burns, Mm. having to deal with the reality that you're never going to look the same again, coupled with the fact now that you've lost your dad at 15. That fucking poor girl. No, you can't even fathom that. No, that's not. That is like she honestly is for me. She's my inspiration. I tell her all the time. I was like, you can honestly do whatever you want. Like you are so, to me, you're like, fuck. She just, she blows me away. And like to see her now, like as well, is she's living her life to the fullest. (laughs) Like she's like, she makes me so happy just seeing how she is. And like, you know, people one day should write a book. I always say with that one day, they'll do a movie on us. (laughs) Like like our little story together is like fucking crazy. So that's so insane that you guys came from different, similar backgrounds but mm. totally different age i mean at 19 yeah. you're not hanging out with 15 year olds yeah um the fact yeah. that you guys have managed to find like a friendship in that is, is such yeah. a fucking cool story yeah there's such a connection there you yeah. know you say like you said earlier you're like this is the only time i'm going to tell this story or this is like the only time that you've had a chance to like tell mm. the story because i'm sure you've told fragments you tell of fr- yeah yeah um similar when josh went to jail in japan and he was mm. like I want to just tell the fucking story yeah. just once so people can listen to it. Yeah. I don't want to tell the story forever and it's not, it doesn't define who you are as a person, but it is yeah. a part of who you are as a person, whether you like it or not. 100%, yeah. You should definitely write a fucking book. Yeah. I mean, you can say whatever you want. Like if you and yeah. her write a book, yeah. what you have lived through, even though you're telling the first maybe 30% of it right now is like, mm. It's what it's the, the craziest story I've ever heard in my life. Mm. Just the even the idea of like a girl at fifteen losing her dad and and the fact that she technically saved your life on a plane. Yeah, is it, it's it, this is the fucking craziest story I've ever yeah. heard. It's insane. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, you don't know what to say because no. it's like because it happened, but it's so mind blowing. Like it's still even like I said when I was writing the notes down, I'm still just like fuck. Like how do you like. Yeah, like comprehend all of that. Like I, I am able to now. Like I've, for so long I couldn't comprehend it because it was just too much. It was like you can't just keep surviving this, this, this and then this happens and this happens and you're just like when does this shit end? Like what's, what is the end game? I think the craziest thing is when you do experience some major trauma or like a major moment, you know it when it happens. I think part of you is always thinking, oh, when can... I get this out of the way and it's going to go back to normal. Yeah. And it's like, that's gone. Yeah. Like yeah. normal's not there anymore. Nah. Like you're going to have to build a new one and you kind of yeah. pine for the normal of before. You're like, yeah. that's what I was saying with the job she, thing. Yeah, like I just exactly. want to go to work. Yeah. It's like, mate, work is fucking a long, long time away from where I was at that point. Like it was so far away. Like you just want to be normal. You don't want to be this person in the wheelchair or 
you know that's uh, that's how your brain works i guess yeah. like it's just trying to fight that off like just give me the normal job i just i don't no care shit. Is that the first that, that's the first like sort of fear i suppose like yeah. and that's the first time because it, obviously that's the point where shocks wearing off stuff like that and it's like yeah the reality starting to seep in and you're just like no nah, i don't want that like that's a yeah i'm um, not doing that yeah and that's you're kind it, of willing yeah. that away yeah i think it's got to do as well like seeing all your familiar faces like once you get home and then you start to see your whole family all your friends and stuff and then it's like okay you start your brain must start processing what's happened like and then you're like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. this is fucked <laughs> this isn't good it also so. gives you the the flip side of as well um you know your brain plays tricks on you it's like almost automatically you'll go into the oh but like how would these people be if i didn't come back yeah i didn't nearly die i was in jail but um i thought to myself when i came back i was like imagine what my dad would be doing now if i was still in japan for 20 years so like what would his face look like now and you see yeah. your parents and shit you'd be like what if i wasn't here anymore mm-hmm. you know how would my dad feel and that shit fucking smacks you oh it does like especially being being a parent now i'm yeah. like driving here i was had that thought i was like if i didn't survive these kids aren't alive like exactly they don't exist yeah like i think your kids are weird. meant to do something right? <laughs> 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 what you're saying like protect your children yeah. at all costs oh we do <laughs> yeah, i messaged you um i messaged you a couple of days ago because you yeah. just popped up on my feed and it was the two little two little kids yeah. and i was like are these your kids and you were yeah. like yeah and it just made me so happy man just because yeah. i heard this story not not in this depth but i heard this story yeah. and then just to see these like two little shit like they, they look so happy like they're yeah. the happiest looking kids yeah and it's like are these yeah. both yours you're like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. blonde hair blue eyes <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh yeah where did that come from <laughs> are they um they're super similar age right they're pretty yeah close. they're only they're only 18 months apart so you got busy, you three, busy yeah guy. we got busy yeah. quick so <laughs> Yeah, once you once you meet it, you go through the shit with girls. You finally meet a good one, and you're like, "Fuck!" Like obviously, I've mentioned before, I got divorced and stuff. And yeah, meeting Kate, like I went on a fucking after getting divorced, I was partying hard for two years, and then how old yeah, were you then? I uh, moved back to it must have been thirty two or thirty three. Yep. And then yeah, moved back to Perth because I was living in Queensland. So moved back to Perth, partied crazy for two years, and then yeah, met Kate and. Yeah, it's just crazy because if, when you find someone who just lets you be you, is fucking incredible. Like, you know, like she's a big part of, you know, obviously she's birthed our children and stuff like that, but she's a big part of lets me, let me be me. And like, I've never had that before. Mm. And it's fucking incredible. Like, just everything kind of falls into place yeah and you're like oh yeah i've went through the shit like not this stuff i mean talking divorce and stuff yep. like bad partners and stuff you go through that to finally then appreciate when you do you know find someone incredible and the funny thing is like no matter how much shit you go through like mm. you're explaining a story of going through yeah the shit yeah and then you still have to have like bad relationships yeah still have to do that's the what i mean like, like survived a there. fucking divorce as well put that on top <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, the yeah. trials and tribulations yeah now yeah to my two young boys are just fuck like incredible man you like, can see that they're your life man yeah like, even the oyg dad squad stuff yeah. i was just like it yeah. made me so happy yeah it's it's cool man like they're the whole reason why i brought everything back again like i just thought i'll just do some shirts for them and stuff and then it just went crazy again and i was like oh fuck i just gotta keep just making some new designs and stuff like that and Straight just, up. yeah just it like blew me away because i said to said to kate my wife i was like i just you know i just want to do a few little i'm sure a few of the boys will want some shirts yeah. and then i was like just put a little post up i was like does anyone want any of these lyg stuff and then they're all just like i made this little quick little online store and it just went fucking I was like, get your orders in. I'm just doing, you know, and then going to print it, sell and then print. And then it just fucking went crazy. So How I was like, much easier is it now? It's oh, fucking, it's when, nah. when we were doing it, like when oh. I was doing design for you and we were, I think I was printing the shirts as well. My memory. Yeah, like, you did like, yeah, the main LYD. The main one, yeah. yeah. And it was just like. Um, yeah, once I bought, so the first little one I did was just a little graph sort of style one. And it um it sold well, but as soon as I dropped the original logo that you mm-hmm. created, that just was fucking crazy. Like it's did like mental. I didn't expect anything. I was just like expecting like 
you know, two t-shirts or three t-shirts. And now it's just, it's my little, it's my little side gig again. So it's That's good. That's so sick, dude. I love yeah. hearing that. Well, back in the day, we all wanted to identify with something that was us, right? And I remember yeah. Shock Mansion being like massive. Yeah. Yeah. They did the crooked colors. No, was it crooked colors? Crooked color? uniform. Crooked, crooked uniform. uniform. Yeah. yeah. And they were long tees yeah. and they were dope prints. And I was like, oh, I can fuck with this. Someone yeah. finally making something for us. Yeah. And you guys were doing the same thing. Yeah, that's what we, we got all their stuff over as well. Yeah. Like we just, yeah, we did like I was importing dickies and shit like that, yeah. which was back then everybody was wearing them. And yeah. Then you, you couldn't go and buy them in City Beach and shit like no that. Shit. You couldn't buy them anywhere. Yeah. Like, and then I think what you... But what I did was selling him half price to what, where you could buy him. Yeah. So it was yeah. getting, because they were charging a fucking yeah, fortune. Like 80 bucks for a pair yeah, of shorts, I, I was selling them for like 40 yeah. and then I think 50 or 60 for the pants and they were fucking hating me. They were telling me to stop, but I was like, nah, I don't know. You know, that was still fucking double markup. No <laughs> shit. That's it. That grey import. And yeah. that spot was in um, Victoria Park and I, yeah. I go down there because I've done a few, I've done like Palace Arcade and a yep. few other bits around there. And every time yeah. I go down there, because I've, I just pretty much never been. I think I went down there to get tattooed once. Yeah. Um, cause uh, hold fast, hold fast was just yeah. there. And, um, yeah, I've been back there recently and I go past that and I'm like, I think it might be like a dry cleaners or like a travel agent or something. Yeah. Like. I think it's like, yeah. it's something, but I yeah. go past and I'm like, Oh man, I remember it's, being yeah. up because we, we really, we really did it like every single part of it. Yeah. Um, we were like yeah. on ladders and man, it was stuff like, like how we did that just from, like the ground up yeah like for real. did everything we did everything it was just and we just we didn't know what we're doing like <laughs> you, you knew what you were doing <laughs> no, dude, I had you no knew. Idea. for real like that was the thing is like back yeah. then people would be like you know what you're doing and i'd be like i'll fucking figure it yeah, out yeah, yeah yeah like but you just it's not that hard you just no, figure it out it right? was like it was crazy and like just the the support we had and stuff was just fucking mental like i'd never expected it to go so well and i'd probably still have the shop today if i'd stayed living in wa mm. i'd still be open with different obviously would have changed themes over yeah. the years and stuff so but uh, you popped it up again now yeah like, and the thing is i think the the thing that was always important with that was like it was almost like a motto for you guys. Like I remember because you were ex- you yeah. were explaining it to me, which is how Dude, I heard this story. Because I had a fucking time. thing tattooed on his stomach, yeah, right? Yeah, that's that's, that's all. We, we've all got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's yeah, crazy. That was just yeah. The, the like the name is what it comes from. This sort of story. It's 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 letting yourself go, but it's like it comes from like someone bagging one of the boys out for putting on weight he's letting himself go yeah. but then we sort of like i thought about it and i was like fuck it's got a little bit it's real corny but it's also got a little bit more meaning for it behind us like it's just about just don't fucking hold yourself back like just let yourself go and just go do i know it's the cliche shit go do what you want to do on that or just you know the cliches are there for a reason though there's nothing yeah, exactly. worse than when you go through something in life and there's a cliche yeah. that sums it up perfectly and you're like fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know you're just like fuck man i know i say it all the time but, you know so yeah so, so take fu- take us back as a you're um we got to megan and yeah. the not breathing so you've come back into figuring perth. out like yeah. the york yeah back in royal perth yeah. and yeah like seeing everyone come through and yeah spent sort of oh i spent 10 days like in intensive care with i can probably list like what my injuries were at this stage yeah so i need to actually get my notes for out gold. for this one because for gold. the list is quite large but i can start with like i had burns on both calves yep. like both of my the bottom parts of my legs were all burnt which i had like skin grafts and fiona wood the the um excellent doctor she created the spray on skin yeah so fiona i had stanley that. right Fi- yeah fiona wood yeah but is no, fiona, stanley fiona stanley's a hospital oh, different. <laughs> yeah but isn't no. it named after uh, fiona wood okay. has a burns yeah, unit in gotcha. rph gotcha. named after her so she yeah she creates spray on skin so yeah. me megan we've all got that like my legs but yeah megan has yeah yeah quite a lot and then yeah i have um dislocated hip um shattered pelvis um like internal bleeding i obviously have the shrapnel which is pressing on my spinal cord um yeah i've got massive cuts like a massive like gouge out of the back of my right um right leg which is sort of like size of a beer can out out the back of my leg just a big big hole there fuck 
and just all like lots of little cuts all over my back sort of like you hit by glass and yeah my my hip one's probably the craziest like because it was like it was it actually came out it was a compound fracture where my hip was out so mm. it broke, that, broke that, the skin yeah like that i've that never seen scar. a hip break yeah i know what the fuck <laughs> man <laughs> legs arms yeah hip no. what the fuck, the fuck? Over extend mm-hmm. the hip, bro? Yeah. yeah so oh. that was yeah hanging out okay yeah did you ever did, did you at any point see that no nah, nah, okay because nah. that would have been it you would have nah. just been like i'm checking out no nah. so yeah that's Pretty much, yeah. The, obviously, the one with the most damage is on the was back the of neck. Yeah. yeah, back of my neck with beam and you've powers. Got, and that's open to your fucking brain. Yeah, because your friend touched it. That's yes, he's been in there. He's been in there. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, that's pretty much. So when they went into emergency surgery with you, like initially, what was mm. like? I suppose they were just trying to stop the bleeding would have been the main yeah. thing to and get you back to Australia. And infection. I think. Yeah. In, yeah. Yeah. yeah you're that's right, the big one. Because I need to actually bring that up too. Yeah. Is I don't know if many people know, but what they covered the bomb in, they covered the oh, bomb in fucking cow manure those cows. to create fucking infections. infections. Yeah. Yeah. Which was fucking. Fuck that's cunty, eh? Yeah. Oh my that's God. another level of just, yeah. all right, if you survive, we're going to really fuck yeah, with you. I'm still so, fucking with you. Yeah. So that's a, a, just another memory just popped about when people would come and see me, it was almost like COVID. They had to um, fully cover up and yeah, like right. sit there, wash their hands before they'd come in and stuff. So, so any germs they might've introduced into your environment could have literally killed you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just another little <laughs> fucking <me>. cunt. <laughs> Hell yeah. So how long were you in Royal Perth before you gained the, use of your limbs if i'm if i'm yeah. jumping forward and you've got a no, strategy no. feel free to, to pull it back so in it's this is what i was going over because i i finally get feelings in the the cliche part again in my toes yeah where everyone sort of seems that comes back from that is gets in their toes and so it came back gradually it didn't come yeah. back like oh mm. fuck i can yeah. move yeah yeah okay. so it's, that little little bit of like just was you know starting with the toes and I, if i can remember right it's about five or six weeks later. So I'm still still in Royal Perth. and it's, But they were as soon as I start to get feeling, they're like, get him out, get him to Shenton Park Rehab. Like soon, like, I just remember and I just fucking hated there was an old lady at RPH and she was just like, get him out, he needs to go there. But what she was doing is because she knew like as soon as I went, elsewhere i would just fucking the rehab was just what i needed like yeah. you know like but i just remember i was like she's such a fucking bitch yeah, she's like i out. need to yeah, keep this shit like, alive yeah. In, yeah. in his brain like i need to yeah and i'm like still processing like i should be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life yeah. but now i've just got like getting feeling in my toes again. were you ever told by doctors you were going to be in a wheelchair for the rest yeah. of your life in darwin oh in darwin God. but you know like that's yeah how's that conversation oh it's as you can ex- sort of expect they were like look there's an extremely slim chance that you're going to be able to walk again like there is a tiny hope but you know you're facing life in for the yeah the rest of your life in a wheelchair so neck down yeah it was sort of like i don't know i can't can't remember being like crazy upset about it until I get back to Perth. That's when I said I had all those thoughts of like, you know, I didn't Reality want to be here anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. At that at the stage, it probably doesn't. It probably doesn't. Um, what do you call it? Doesn't register yeah. what you're saying. But you're like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, until yeah, because it's all just fucking crazy to yeah. that point anyway. Yeah. But you're pretty. You're getting pretty depressed when you're in Perth and you. Yeah. You think about I'm, it. Yeah. yeah once of, I'm home, then yeah. It's sort of, yeah, it all becomes, everything crashes and, yeah, you realise what's happened and you then start watching it on the news and you're seeing, like, the boys are on the news getting interviewed and stuff, like, out front of the Royal Perth saying, yeah, <laughs> as is up there, he's, you know, like, he's doing well and stuff. Like, you, you're seeing that and you're just like, what the fuck? Like, it's, it's that so... That must be just so surreal. Yeah, like, it's, it's weird, like. Yeah, because you just you were just talking to them, and then they're on the news, like <laughs> downstairs. You know, yeah, <laughs> so it's weird. But. Um, male question: Did your dick work? Yeah, 
So you were paralyzed, couldn't feel yeah. your toes, but your dick still worked? Yeah. Well, because, that's got to be fucking because you good I would just see it. <laughs> I'm so I glad you said it. Yes. And I'll be like, what the fuck? But I didn't, I didn't know. Like, yeah. I didn't, you know, like, but you'd see it work. Yeah. So I guess like. That's got to be a good that's sign, where you, right? That's where you say, I guess you see people in wheelchairs do have kids. I don't know how, what they do, but. I've never looked into it, but yeah. I haven't had to. But you yeah. didn't really look back, did you? Because nah. you just like, right. oh, that was that's a scary destination for you. I would have been saying. under the impression, like, if I could get it to Twitch, I'm coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Because it must work on the same circuit. Yeah. <laughs> it can't work on a different can't circuit, just, right? Yeah. I don't know. It was, yeah. Well, that's, that's funny. Do you, yeah. do, you remember, <laughs> do you remember the moment that you felt movement and you started? Were you sitting there? Were you trying? Were you like, I'm going to fucking every day? No, nah, it, it was the whole sheet thing. Like, I saw. Like I saw the sheet move, like like I'd moved my toes, and I was like, and then I just had this weird like feeling on right on the top of my big toe, and I was like, it just almost felt like someone had a knife and was just like just running it across the top, but not cutting it in a in a sense, yeah, like yeah. just like a line, and it was obviously me moving the sheet, like and it's just sort of like moving back and forth, but yeah, that's that's what I can remember and what I can relate it to, so. Did you shout out or something or were you just, because it's, sorry, I'm, I'm just trying to frame um, it. Yeah, like, I'm trying to fully remember, remember if yeah. it was in there when it was sort of happening. Were you, but, but it's, so when you're there, cause it's, it's, you said it was like six, six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So six, six weeks. weeks. Are you like, they said there's a chance I'm going to sit here. I'm going to try and move my toes. Or were you just kind of like, I'm just going to fucking see I, what happens I like here. to say I was, yeah, trying to do it, but. Yeah. I don't think I was. I think I it was just, just like, on. yeah, like I didn't have that, you know, the mentality where I'm like, I'm going to fucking walk. I didn't have mm. that thing. I guess I just, maybe in the back, I just always thought I was going to. So I didn't yeah, right. get that killer instinct thing going where, you know, but I don't know. I just, it's sort of, it's weird how then it's so fast after that. Like learning, learning to walk was fucking one of the hardest things I've ever done, but in that space of going from your toes wiggling to me walking again is probably about four or five weeks. So like, but that's not fully recovered. That's like, you know, in it walking, like with the help of a frame and stuff like that. Like, did you have like, a, when, when you were getting feeling back, yeah. did you have feeling through everything or was there bits that were still turned off? Was my, it- my whole left side is still to this day, not quite a hundred percent. Like that was the last bit to come, which I think is actually quite common with, with people who have been through like what they call temporary paralysis and stuff is the left side is always, the last side to come back and then it never really does like my even just sitting here i know like this this just drops like it doesn't sit like properly so yeah it's yeah that's the probably yeah the thing that sort of it carries on yeah it carries Are on you, how's your your hands yeah everything everything's really fine like yeah. this so it's as super minor by by any stretch yeah. you just notice it's not quite yeah as like as i get older now like but i don't know if that's just nearing on 40 that yeah, yeah no, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah as i get old everything starts to hurt now on my back <laughs> and shit but that's just old man shit. yeah that's, that's got it. nothing to do with terrorism nah, fuck <laughs> no. yeah so yeah you've got to learn to fucking walk again yeah and that was that's like i said it's probably the hardest thing i've had to do in my life like for trying to just do something that you just do every other day you don't fucking think about it you know you walk up the stairs walk up and down those stairs and you're just like no oh. you you know and then to try to do it at the age of 19 is fucking crazy you it know? must be the most frustrating thing in the it world. is because you just see and i'll just see everyone come in and out of my room and they're just like i remember i'll jump to that bit i remember when i made it to the like my door had like the square little window up the top in my room i remember and no one was in there apart from the nurse was helping me walk and i made it all the way to the door which was probably only two meters (laughs) and i've like was banging on the door mum and dad was sitting outside and i was like stand you know standing up at that height of that window and them just seeing and they're just like what the fuck is that? You know, like waving at him. He's and, up. Yeah. So I remember that. Like, that's real, yeah, real distinct in my memory, making it all that way. And then, yeah, like as you see on the movies and stuff, on those, the beams and stuff, walk along there and just doing it, they'd come and get me like, I think about three times a day and it would just, it was fucked because it's, 
the easiest thing to do, but the hardest thing. It would now, be so hard in what, your brain, like that frustration of that. Yeah. Was it frustration alone or like now I'm thinking about it, was there any embarrassment that was fueling your your kind of like not wanting to do it or like yeah uh, yeah like a little bit. I think you a little should bit. be able to yeah. do but you yeah can't. and I think the way like some of the boys are like hurry up like and get out of here so we yeah. can you know like we can go do what we're doing like and I'm like I fucking fuck. can't like I'm trying yeah. and trying yeah. like to try boys, and do yeah. something that you know how to do yeah. Yeah, and you just – you can't do it. But where you are, you're making progress. Mm. And it's like every day you're 1%, doing that little bit, little bit, little bit. Yeah. And finally, as time goes on, you know, they allow me to go home, like fucking months later, allow me to go home. And I'm still like can't properly, pro- properly walk like as normal. Like it's still like, you know, I've got a wheelchair for to go long distances and stuff like that, so – Straight away, I get home, the boys pick me up and we go straight out, like down to Scarborough just to, to go pub. down. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say pub, but we, <laughs> it wasn't the pub, but that wasn't too long after. Yeah. But we just got down there and just did our thing, just hung out and, you know, just those sort of memories are what's pretty crazy because they were pushing me around in a wheelchair. Oh, like, no shit. You know. Did they talk to you? In like an emotional sense, in a, or was it just kind of the, just the boys? Like it's just like, the yeah, boys. you're good. Yeah. Because yeah. everyone's got, yeah, a and lot, everyone's got a different story. Like every single one of those people yeah. has like a, a really big fucking story going on. Obviously everything is just like, is he going to be okay? Like you, you being okay is the number mm. one thing. So yeah. being there and standing there in that situation, it must've been like yeah. a lot of dudes just like holding yeah. it in going, yeah, yeah. bro, it's Probably, all good. Yeah, like, it's like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> all trying to hold it in and not fucking yeah i don't know we've got like a crazy bond like if obviously a few of the boys as we get older and stuff we don't see each other all the time but we don't we tend not to miss that day like our anniversary date which you know like this year was actually the first one i wasn't able to get because i just started working a new job so i wasn't i wasn't able i was working fifo so i wasn't able to take it off and in yeah that's my first one in 19 years that i've missed and i lived in queensland for seven of them and i still made it back every year for that so next year yeah 20 years 20 years and, yeah Fuck. fucking mental that is absolutely it's it's absolutely insane man mm. i suppose like the thing is is like the story doesn't just end you know what i mean like there's mm. it, it, it affects the way that you see the world it affects so many yeah. people's lives in so many different ways and like it's i think in the movie version you get out of the hospital and you guys are all standing yeah. in scarborough yeah. and it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Home, it's all good. yeah did you have trouble i'm sure you did with yeah. um ptsd d- yeah ptsd <laughs> just being yeah. but just just being back in the world yeah my mental state really deteriorated like after i got home as well because i guess then it's the reality of everything like and still not being able to do everything, even though I was starting to walk and all that. But my mental state went really bad with the whole probably just like why me, why me sort of thing. And being that young, you don't really understand. There's no, it's not why me. It's like, think about like, it's the positive of we're here. We're like, now we're going to live. But you're that young and you start, you know, you have survivor guilt too of hearing, you know, the stories of people who didn't make it home and, you know, my heart always is always bleeds for them because it's just fucking easily could have been mm. any of us. For boys. those who don't know, it's worthwhile mentioning 202 people lost yeah, their yeah, lives that day. 202 yeah. people. Try and like quantify that. 88, yeah. 88, 88 Australians. Australians, yeah. And another yeah. 200 injured or two, 300 injured. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the yeah, injured I looked number. Up the, I looked yeah. up the numbers today. I think it was like two and two. Yeah. But uh, like imagine 200 people in a room. Yeah, yeah, and each of those has families, and each of those has a history. Yeah. It's, it's you guys fucking... like obviously just think with the whole Dorsia thing is just think of that. It's like that's yeah, Dorsia just wiped a whole room like, gone, going yeah. off, and then yeah, it's... and the and the and the, the, pole, the carry on effects of that from yeah, f- everyone's got mom and a dad and, a f- and friends. And yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it just affects so much, and yeah. it's. It was mm. so weird, like we were just just even reviewing back into that stuff and just looking at it and remembering like mm. the Amrozi and like the yeah, um, and that sort of stuff and the, the way that they were. I suppose it, with the amount of media coverage that was going on here as well, yeah, you're just living in a fucking totally surreal world, right? Because yeah. you're just like, 
I'm trying to get better and there's yeah. this media sensationalism. Mm-hmm. And I think fortunately it was at a time where there was still probably like five or six news channels and there was like MySpace. Yeah. You didn't have probably have to receive the opinions of like the whole fucking world. Exactly, like if that happened yeah. now and oh, people imagine, going like, yeah. oh, saying some yeah. dumb shit, you'd just be like, shit. what? Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the shit we would have copped, I guess, like, yeah, if <laughs> typical if fucking happened, Australians probably yeah. deserved it. Yeah, yeah, the Bali Bogans yeah, going exactly. over there, yeah, you know, yeah. like Perth now comments. Yeah, yeah you fuck imagine off, that. Like dude. it's fucking everyone has an opinion, but luckily it wasn't around then. So I've know. never obviously spoken to anyone who has um, has been in a fucking terrorist event. The people that perpetrated it. Do they enter your consciousness at all at this point? Are you like, fuck those guys? Are you like... Are they people or is it just yeah. an attack? Like, what, well, what does that look like for you? So, once I sort of get home and then everything, like they catch the guys, the government then offers myself, Chad and Sano, a trip to go to court. And myself and Chad and our two dads, we take the opportunity and we fly back within that first year... I think it was Fuck. about seven months later. Yeah. We fly back to Bali for a week and we go to the courtroom every day and sit in court you with, fu- you, you with, see yeah, with Amrosi yelling fucking his shit. So we're sitting there like for like a couple hours a day. Are you steaming at this guy? Like, are you, what, what's I the think, I think the dad's fucking were. Oh, definitely. Chad yeah. and I were sort of, I don't know, we were like, fuck this dude, but not you're almost like it's not real like yeah. it's like the, the guy that did it's just there yeah like, but but not but not i don't yeah. know like it's like he's a character almost in the yeah. movie yeah we're he's, sitting there he's going off and then you know then the next day we'd like you'd get the newspaper at in the like your little buffet thing at your hotel and then there's us on the front cover like you know you can't read anything but there's us in in the courtroom for photos and stuff like that was yeah that was pretty hectic seeing that, but it wasn't closure. It was, you know, we just wanted to go and see them. And then, I don't know, I can't like, it's hard to put into words because it's, it's felt so, yeah, so strange, like a dream. Like it wasn't real, but we were in the core and we still look at them now. We've still got the pictures of us and then seeing him yelling and carrying on and shit. But, How was your yeah. sort of recovery going at this point when you got that's, back i i was sweet then like yeah. that's so that's i think it was about seven months later i think that's when we went i can't i should have probably looked up the exact sort of and you're walking court. without help yeah and yeah that's yeah crazy. so we just went over just myself like the four of us and we pretty much drank at the hotel just we just stayed in our hotel and then got chauffeured to the courtrooms and back like full security and stuff like that so yeah it was pretty that was a pretty surreal, mm, would have been surreal experience. Just coming you, face to face with them. So fucking oath, like man, so close as well. Mm. Have you been back to Bali um, since? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I don't even know what I'm like. What my number of trips is up but to it's now? Up there. It's yeah, yeah. It doesn't uh, didn't kind of. It did at first. Yeah, at first for the first let's just say ten years. Mm-hmm. First ten years, I went once for the um for the for the trials i went another time for a wedding and then i went for the 10th anniversary the government flew yep. us all out yep. again so we went for that so and then after that is when i went to you know i was like i'm all sweet with it but at the first time it was like first those three times in that 10 years was didn't leave the hotel like it was just strictly hotel just chilling or we'd go surf out the front of the hotel yeah like and then that come style. back yeah. yeah so but the whole with the terrorists it's funny because i was thinking about this what i wanted to bring up is like a lot of people always ask me like do you fucking do you hate muslims like has it you know how you like has it created you to like hate that race and, that? and i'm like it, it, i don't like and i don't hold any like grudge i don't really like religion and that's you know i don't really like it but i don't hate it or shit like that and i definitely don't hate muslims i um 
don't obviously don't like fucking extremist fucking terrorists. <laughs> but no shit. As yeah, as far we got as got plenty of them in Christianity too, though. Yeah, you know? like, well, that's right. That's where the whole thing. Everyone had sort of when it first happened was expecting myself to be like off fuck, it. Yeah. yeah, fuck these Muslims yeah. and shit. I was never like that. And it's not, you know. And I remember going to uh, one of my cousins' like little high school or primary school assembly and. My auntie saying, like, my auntie wanted me to come and I went. She's like, I just need to, like, there's one of the ladies, like, one of the girl's mums is a Muslim and she'll be in her full thing. Is that all right? I was like, yeah, that's cool. I was like, went straight up and talking to her and stuff. And they were just like, it was like a, you know, like this whole People thing. Like, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm not like that. You yeah. didn't try to murder me. No like, shit. you've had some yeah. fucking you know absolute cockhead who's just following what someone's telling him so there needs to be that demarcation i mean people are very quick to to judge quick to point fingers i grew up in the middle east i live in a place called bahrain for like my entire primary school so i've had a lot of experience in in that sort of end of the world um and people are very quick to judge and and i respect you for the fact that you weren't that person um Mm. because that is not reflective that behavior is not reflective of of the religion yeah. and i'm kind of with you in the sense that kind of all religions are dumb as fuck mm. like yeah if you still believe in a dude in a fucking cloud right now yeah have a hard look at yourself yeah that's that's <laughs> right yeah like i'm just like you know each to their own but i don't really like it like exactly it's just, right yeah. but there's no identity like it's, it's not like you're identifying no. anyone as being worse than another no. No. no but i think it's it's really interesting and it's it's fucking fantastic that you had this experience and it just sounds like from your story like in every single step of the way it's like there was there was kind of like i'm sure there was dark times but there was a lot of positivity mm. yeah you know yeah, like definitely and and that's kind of probably testament to your parents or like yeah. your friends are the sort of people that you the yeah. sort of person that you are but that gets built by what do they say yeah. it's like um it takes a village for you to go through such an extreme thing and not be you never know what's on the other side of that like you mm-hmm. can be pushed to full hatred you can be pushed to complete depression you could be pushed to like yeah drug addiction and stuff like that and obviously that was i was reading with the um the bali stuff the the toll of people that have been lost yeah post bali through like yeah. ptsd and depression and stuff yeah. it's just it's it just keeps going i think the percentage of suicides after is quite fucking large like so it's like i'm not gonna sugarcoat it like i've had i did have some really dark dark times and I think it's as well, it's probably like just saying this is like a little bit of reaching out to people who let's just say have a partner or someone in their life that just keeps saying, just get over it, just get over it. It's happened so long ago. So when you have someone like that, you need to just fucking get rid of them (laughs) because you need to deal with what, you know, if you're having little episodes or whatever, like or nightmares and stuff, you need you do need help when you need to deal with it because you're not bigger than that. And yeah, having someone that always was telling me to just get over it and just it's happened so long ago, it was ten years ago, or whatever, just get over it. I was like, you know, I just luckily enough I was man enough to just go and do counselling by myself, like go seek it out because. Yeah, I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not right because I knew every time I was drinking or something, I'd just flip out and that that anger and that is not me. That's not, you know, I don't, that's a part of the PTSD and stuff, you know, like, and I knew I needed to, to speak to people and so, I, and I'd still do it like every probably, i say the last time I went was two years ago. So it'll probably, you know, come up again where I'll go. If I start to, I think now, being a parent as well it's made me aware of my mental state more like i don't know how that works but i like well, you need to be present right yeah because like, if i start to feel shitty then I, I act shitty towards the kids and then i can you can hear yourself more i don't know it's a weird yeah. fucking thing so you know you start i'm aware of it and my wife kate she's incredible she's you know like supports me through all of that and she'll be like you know go and have a chat to someone never like pushing or like telling me to get over it like she's just she knows like she's incredible that point i think really needs to be hammered home as men we're not often told but it's expected of us 
to just get on with it. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, you've got an extreme case, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know what sort of fucking psychopath would tell anyone who's been through what you've been through yeah. to just get, get over, over it. it. Yeah. But it doesn't matter what it is. You might have had a fucking shit day at work. You might yeah. have had a drama with your old man or your or, or whoever. You want to try and find someone who's going to be supportive of that. Um, yeah. And I think that's really important because especially as men, we fall into these toxic relationships really fucking easily. Yeah. Because it's easy for us to justify it. Yeah. Oh, we're men. Oh, it doesn't fucking matter. You know, whatever. Yeah. But sometimes girls can be fucking harsh. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, I think they, it's, I say this lightly, but because we don't want to spin off into a whole no, other thing. No. But I think like you need to be accountable as well for the shit you say. To- if someone is not there to support you. Yeah. And it's for something, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. If, if it's important to you, it should be important to them. Exactly. And if that's not reflected, right. fuck that person off. Yeah, 100%. Have some, have some strength. Yeah. Props for going to get therapy on it. I mean, it's like, yeah. it's crazy because we're talking 19 years ago. Mm. Like, I was wondering whether anyone even said to you, like, do you, you know, you need to go to therapy <laughs> because <laughs> it wasn't something that was really... No, that's happening. right, yeah. When I think the first time I went was only about two years after. And I just knew something wasn't right because yeah. I was drinking and trying to fight and shit like that and i don't i'm not like that sort of person no no and yeah it was just like that's when i knew and i felt the triggers of like getting fucking angry and i you know and then luckily enough i was you know mum and that helped me set it up and when and i was you know normal thing and shitting myself and then yeah just it helped i don't know how what they you know just talking and whatever i don't know it just helps and you begin to just feel calm again and and whatnot and can able to have a drink and not fucking mm-hmm. you know flip out or lose the plot and you trust yeah. yourself a bit more right yeah because you're not like yeah. what's on the other side of the drink yeah and um i think yeah you said calm yeah. i mean that's that's yeah. the one word that fully resonates with me and i think it does with everyone it's like that's all you really want yeah and the only reason that you really sort of seek therapy and stuff because there's just i don't think you realize that there's a good chaos the yeah. chaos that's going on in your head until you start talking about it. Mm-hmm. There's things behind sort of a threshold in your, your brain and you don't realize they're there. You start to yeah. talk and then they come out and it doesn't matter if you're with a therapist or you're with friends or whatever. And I think we spend way too much time just like in our own heads. I know I do. Yeah. And that's where that, that stuff just kind of festers and it just kind of becomes a feeling. It just yeah. becomes a feeling of, a, of, of, of a anger or it becomes a feeling of like aggression. Mm-hmm. And you, you see it like you're, you're the same age as me, man. You're nearly 40. Yeah. And you look back on people when you were going out and you're like, that guy fights all the time or that guy yeah. is, get, just gets hammered all the time and stuff. And you kind of just pigeonhole people into that. It's like, oh, you're the angry mm-hmm. guy. And then as you get older, you're like, oh, sh- you, you had like some problems that you couldn't figure out mm-hmm. that was your only out was, yeah. was mm. to do that you didn't want to be that person yeah but at the time you're just like that guy's a dick yeah it's, you yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's, but little do you know that he's probably yeah actually dealing with some shit dealing with some shit and it's he's just covering it over and then as soon as they drink it's yeah comes, comes straight back to the out. service everyone says that but we we all do it and that little defense mechanism exactly we just right. drink and then all of a sudden you get drunk and it comes fo- mm. like flogging out so. and there's fights everywhere man if you want them so touching man. back on your experience when you look back now on that time and who you were then and who you are now, is there a lesson or a or something that resonates with you that you that you reflect back on? The way that you look at me, I feel like there yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's like again, it's that whole cliche thing and it's try not to just sweat the small shit and just just keep living like just I don't know, like if I could say to myself would be just to just keep pushing through and just keep but I did it. So it's like I did that. I did listen to an older self of like, because I did keep pushing and, you know. You let yourself go. Yeah, I just let myself go. <laughs> were you conscious of the fact that you were doing that? Were you conscious? Did you have something in you where you were like, I'm going to fucking get through this. I'm going to be, you know, like I'm, I'm going to be on the other side of this. I think, yeah, I think like once I did get feeling in my toes and that, then I was like, yep, yeah, it's on now. Like yep. I'm going to get back in the water. At that stage, we weren't even riding many <laughs> motorbikes and shit. Surf. But it was like, yeah. we just wanted to get back in the water. And I was just, I remember actually having dreams of surfing and that was, I hadn't even got feeling. And I was like, fuck, that felt amazing. 
of like just having that dream, like yeah. and then, but then waking up and being just like, fuck, I can't do that. So it was just like that was the thing that you had in front of you. When yeah, you're like, that, I got to. Yeah. What was the first surf like? Oh fuck, <laughs> not not very good, but, <laughs> but it felt good. Were you good before? No, no. <laughs> just average. <laughs> but it's crazy, like you say, yeah, to think back and just be like, I could have either been not here or in a wheelchair, but I was able to pull through everything and just live a complete normal life now. Like it's just yeah. The thing that I always come back to is this control thing. Um, mm-hmm which is interesting in your situation because you had no control. You literally just had to let your body heal and it did. You had faith that it would come back and it did. And that, that's an interesting, I suppose, dichotomy when you, can, you compare it to people who are like super overbearing on their own shit and don't make progress. It's almost like when you just let yourself go and be able to say, look, I'm, I'm at where I'm at and I'm going to do what I can do at my own pace. Your body responds mm-hmm. as opposed to you being like, like you said before, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to drag myself out of this by my, my bootstraps, yeah. which you never did. No. You were just like, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. I think, yeah. I, yeah. That, that whole killer instinct thing. Exactly. Just, yeah. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't experience it. I know people talk about you know similar stories and like yeah i just had this fucking thing telling me i'm like drag me yeah out. Yeah, yeah i'm like i don't know if they're hamming that up a little bit yeah but i didn't get it but no nah but just, you can only experience what you experience exactly right? yeah True, i'm telling you telling true. you everything that i've yeah went through and that and yeah how i felt and yeah didn't have any sort of bit like that like yeah was just, there, do, you, do you remember the first time or was there was there kind of a moment where you were out of it you know, maybe you go back out drinking with your friends, you're, you're walking. Was there a moment where it, you were like, holy fucking shit. That yeah. just like, are you just thinking? Cause it's just think about like, we've just spoke for two hours and yeah. there's so many touch points on this. It's, mm. it's insane. And it's just like, was there a moment? Cause, cause I went through a period years and years ago where things were really, really bad. And, um, for like about two years and you're just in it. I remember being about a year into just normal life again and I was just crossing the road from IGA to my apartment and then I got stuck in the middle island I was waiting for traffic and I realized that I felt fine mm-hmm. there was no stress I wasn't worried I was it was just it was a fucking such a weird nothing moment and it just hit me like a ton of bricks like all this stuff that had happened and I was just like just because it was triggered by the fact that I didn't I wasn't actually carrying any of it at the time. And then it was like, this is what just happened. Yeah. yeah. It's like, Oh my God, what the fuck? It's kind of overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, It's fucking weird, but it's probably meeting my wife now is the moment I'll put this, a little thing on how we met is because obviously I've, you know, been through all this shit, then go through a divorce, come home, party, and still just like never really sat and gone. I know it's crazy like what we went through, but it was like that moment of feeling like the calm and I was like, and finally like was when I think I met Kate was we talked about the moment we met. We met at El Grotto, shout out. (laughs) And Uh, um, You were probably there. Oh, I was probably there. (laughs) And um we literally unloaded everything that's happened on our life from the moment we met each other. And it was like so weird because it's not shit. You don't normally do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, and it was so weird. And I was like, I've never done that. You like, were trying to build familiarity real fast yeah, because like, you guys knew that there was something there. Yeah, I think that's like, what happens. We both did it and it was like crazy. And then like since meeting her, like it's just, just this whole new like i'm like obviously i'm a dad now which has changed everything but you know like she bought that where i was just like she allowed me to be me like if i was having a bad day and like yeah it was just i think it's a credit to her but i think it's because she lets me be me and was i just felt like safe like i'd talk to her and you know tell her what's on my mind and stuff with you know i haven't had that before but i think with the whole thing that was the first moment where i reckon you know, I've really just like, this is what happened and it's fucking crazy, but yeah. Um, and you didn't have to protect anyone from that. You no. didn't have to, 
I think that it's funny when you feel safe and when you feel like at peace. Yeah. It's such a fucking unfamiliar yeah, it, feeling that you're just kind of like, what do I do with this? It's so weird because I've always held that that story and I'm like, fuck, like it's just so full on. Like, and it's still played such a big part where it, do, it doesn't do that anymore. Like it's, I know it's crazy. Like I think my mental toughness now is fucking through the roof. I think yeah, like- I think it definitely is. Yeah, like like even no, the, my first son, when he was born, he didn't breathe for three minutes. So- like we were, you know, my my wife has PTSD from that. So she like this whole thing as well helped her. Like she's gone to counselling now, like to to talk about that and stuff. Like and it just throws that different sort of. I think my mentor, where I was like, all right, we know I know what to do now. Like that we're going through the process, all right? Instead of fucking, you know, dealing with, like not dealing with it we both like dealt with it and she went to counseling and stuff like that so i think that's a big thing to bring out of it all like is being able to actually deal with what happens this shit just can't like you can't just, you can't just run under the rug no nah. because nah. it's seeing nah. that stuff is just crazy yeah. like especially for the for the girls like yeah, you know seeing and- for the mum is like fucking next level so and shout out to all the mums out there 100 percent. it's worthwhile mentioning yeah. uh i got a, a friend po's like sisters having a baby tonight oh, oh shit. Yeah. yeah best of luck <laughs> <laughs> it's Story weird change. like when you hear sisters talk about it yeah on one hand i'm like i kind of don't get why you're like losing your mind but then yeah on the flip side, I'm like, oh, your sisters, you're yeah. almost like genetically identical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's it. this whole shared experience thing going mm-hmm. on here. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy, man. Wild. Mm-hmm. That's some life-changing shit. It's so, so cool that yeah. you had that sort of, you'd been through that experience and you'd been through all of those things so that when someone else goes through that, yeah. you could you could recognize it straight away. Yeah. And yeah. That's, the biggest thing is, is like, don't tell people to fucking just deal with it and don't, think that you just have to deal with it like when yeah. when bad shit happens it's like like i lost two friends this year suicide mm-hmm. yeah and it's like you never think like you, no. you know those people you know them and you're like yeah. they they went that way and it's like oh shit that's a real destination mm-hmm. that's not some thing that i'm never gonna do that's like you need to fight to not get there not go down that path yeah, yeah. so yeah. and doing that and like talking about that and like yeah. being i suppose they say like being vulnerable and shit like that yeah but being able to just go, I'm kind of fucked right now. I don't really know what's going on and have mm. people be like, it's all good. Yeah. You know, like it, that's acceptable. Yeah. Is such a huge thing. And as you said before, like to not have that, to have, mm. to, to put that out there and then have someone go, yeah. just get over it. Yeah. Like I've been fortunate to have like pretty strong and comforting people around me when you were, when you're ready to let them in, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but it, you really need that. I think when you do actually do that thing of just saying like, I, this is what I've gone through or this is what's happened yeah. and have someone accept that and actually listen and actually fucking believe you, you're like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, it's, it makes sense. It also puts the, um, the effort of like our armed forces into perspective as well because mm-hmm. I think that we forget about that often. Yeah. There's guys overseas deployed right now who have seen the same shit, mm-hmm. if not worse, and have to come home and just get on with it. Um, and man, my heart goes out to those yeah, people and their families. Yeah, yeah. as real as it gets. I got like, my brother-in-law's in the um, SAS. I don't think you can tell anyone that. Yeah. So. <laughs> and we'll edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> the locksmith service. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like that. the PTSD in that world is fucking crazy. Yeah. It's like you see that, those pictures on like Insta and stuff of that, that um, soldier, that was like the pre-war and then the three years mm-hmm. that photo and Terrifying, you just see it, it and, yeah. and you're just like fuck days yeah it's crazy it's funny because it's like the talking about this talking about the Bali bombing thing it's it's like a buzz topic for us growing up it was like a thing <laughs> yeah. that happened and then to talk about it from your perspective and to have a conversation about it it's not just the Bali bombings you remember the Bali bombings remember that happened and like yeah. it's actually it's a human story of a person mm-hmm. that, and how mm-hmm. they were affected and like it just makes you realize the depth of everything and like everything that came after it um yeah 
you know, the Bali Nine and watching that fucking documentary. Yeah. Fucking, Jesus Christ. There's also a lot of people that listen to this podcast that probably weren't alive. Well, not, not alive, but yeah, weren't, it was weren't. like kind of before their time. 2002. Yeah. Like I was in year 12 at, yeah. when that happened. Yeah. I'm a little bit younger than you boys. So yeah. like I was one removed because I didn't have any concept of going out and drinking or what Bali was, you know. Mm-hmm. I went to an all boys school. I was in I was in year 12. I had no fucking idea. I was like, yeah. holy shit, this is pretty wild, but had no personal connection to it. I was going to rock it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Going to rock it. I was trying to buy a hat. Uh, yeah. And they did that fucking surf board in Scarborough. And I heard it on the radio. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. Because it's like, a, it's two years after September 11th? No, a year. A year, a yeah. year and a year one and day. One day. Yeah. 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 So that was, yeah, part of their thing while they did it too. One year, one day. A year, a month, and one day. Yeah. How weird yeah. is it that. Osama bin Laden spoke about that. Yeah, he was yeah. in a Badabad or something, and yeah. the other dude, uh, Umar, was in the same place in Pakistan. Yeah. It's just Fucking. like the whole world, like everything that you'd ever seen in, you know, because yeah. you knew about September 11, you knew about exactly. all this. Yeah. Like, said, I'm fucking in this. Yeah. Like I'm how much of that, Scott, was like yeah. fucking him just like, Calling out shouts. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Shout yeah. outs. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they yeah. take credit for fucking for everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the, yeah, man, it's crazy. It must just be such a crazy perspective mm-hmm. to be like, as you said, like you're just fucking watching this shit on your on the yeah. news or like. Yeah. I'm sure you've been in places where people are talking about it and they don't know that you. Yeah, like oh, it's funny. Like, I don't, what I do now for a job is I blow shit up. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would come up at some point. Is no yeah. L three hundred vans though. <laughs> okay, no, I, I blew up dirt to find gold. So it's quite weird. Like now I'm dealing with explosives, and yeah, just you hear people. Like just last week, one of the guys was saying that he was like, "Oh, this was the amount that they used. What we used down one hole is what they used in the. It was the two thousand and five. Um, bombings mm. where they did the little shopping mall one mm-hmm. yeah yeah and he's like this is what they use I was like oh yeah and then you know yeah, I was just like yeah just took it that in that one like, in the van yeah. that I was reading today oh. was a big big naughty yeah. boy yeah yeah, yeah. it was like Fucking a thermo barrack explosion they were yeah. saying like Fucking that's really hot no, no one should really be here really hot yeah. yeah no one should be here like it's yeah luckily they didn't know what they were doing no, no shit they set it off yeah. too fast so. no shit yeah. and I've been to that that spot now obviously as, as probably a lot of the people who are listening have done and seen the memorial mm-hmm. the thing that i don't think you get while you're watching the video is the proximity so i feel like barley roads are probably like half the size of our roads they're yeah. so small yeah. easily it's yeah. so close that car although parked or that van although parked on the other side of the road it may as well have been in the fucking front lo- front yeah. lawn you yeah know? definitely so close yeah this yeah mental st- just to think that size of that thing. And then also to have, yeah, a suicide bomber and that. No shit. And then, yeah, we're still, our group of eight mates are still able to fucking walk away. Kissed after, on yeah. the dick by a fairy, as dick. my fucking dad would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Fucking wild. Yeah, like another thing, like we've made so many like friends and stuff from, you know, going through, going through this all like, um, after the first year anniversary, our really good fr- friends, um, the Ryan family in, on the Gold Coast, and they will listen to this. So um, they're well, like... Ryan family. Yeah. They are absolute legends. And, you know, my... Yeah, I just want to touch on a little thing that there's two brothers, Mitch and Jake, and one year ago, mm, the older brother, Jake, lost his life um, while running in europe so yeah for them like it was one day after the bali anniversary so they'd both survived that and then yeah he's one that you know like it yeah that was really really tough like losing him all those years on so he would message me literally the night before because of the time difference and stuff was like thinking of you and stuff like on the anniversary and i was like yeah same to you brother and then the next morning I get a phone call and wake up to the, the phone oh, call. No. Fuck. So, um, That's yeah. So just surreal. for them, like, like they became our family. Like they mm. became, there was eight of us boys, but it became them as well. Like they just, we didn't think about them. It's weird. Like I've it's known them all my life. So yeah. Yeah. For those. Yeah. 
for those guys, it's just, yeah, it's fucking so heavy. And how is the Indonesian um, authority, I suppose? And I I use that that term blanket, like cops, uh, ambulances, obviously you can't really get access, but how was the Indonesian... Uh, role in all of this do you do you feel like they did a good job do you feel like they fucked you like how Uh, how does that work i think they did as best they could with what they have like um obviously the australian government got us out of there like with the hercules and stuff but they had the feds over there like instantly but I, i just think i think back in like without like the Indonesians, like what they did for me in hospital. Yeah. Like you wouldn't that have, you straight wouldn't be away, here that anyway. surgery and yeah. stuff like, you know, like without that, I wouldn't be here. And mm. everyone was so scared about, Oh, you know, you're getting operated on in Bali. Like, but this is after saying that. Yeah. But like <laughs> when you're already yeah, been hey, saved, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm yeah. alive, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you would have got operated on a seven 11. It's like, it's like the only yeah. thing that needed yeah. to happen. Anything to save your life. So, Stitch me. Yeah, that's all right. So I, I can't fault. Like I, I can't say bad words on, you know, like, and they've been, they are, especially in Bali, the Hindu people are just fucking the most <laughs> amazing people. Yeah. You wouldn't meet nicer people in the world like than them. So, yeah. That's awesome. Do you yeah. know if the girls that you were talking to survived? I don't know if the Swedish girls did not. No. But the Japanese girls Japanese did. Japanese girls yeah. definitely did. And Have you spoke to the Japanese girls since? Nah, we, no. It's another thing we've tried, again, just to hunt them down, to yeah. find, like, um, we got, like... A few years ago, I think we got a name, like Bones got told a name and we we searched, but we can't, for like on Facebook and stuff like that, just, but we can't find, yeah, so it would be fucking incredible, but. I can probably help, by the way, I've got yeah. heaps of friends in Japan, so <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you do, no, I'm <laughs> no, not even joking, like I actually do, if you, if you have a name and like a, an area, I can probably yeah. help you. Yeah, well, we can, we're yeah. always trying because it's mm. just, yeah, something that we'd never got to speak to him again. No so. shit, well, yeah, you, that'd be wild. If anyone's listening to this and actually has yeah. any inkling of, of anything, like, it'd be, it'd be fantastic. Yeah. We, like I said, we started this podcast, we just started talking to each other about dumb shit and people mm. fully listen yeah. and you never know how far these things are going to travel. So it would be yeah. absolutely amazing yeah. if this connected you yeah. with, with one of those people, two, all the two, families and stuff. Yeah, two Japanese girls, if you say, if you survived the Bali bombing, <laughs> want to get in touch, hit up Club Good. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> What a fucking story, man. I honestly think yeah. like, and you tell it, you tell us people, and I'm sure that as you said, like it's not something that you've, you've done a lot of. Um, yeah. There's a book there, bro. <laughs> yeah. like, I, that shit is yeah. the, it's the craziest I mean, thing I've ever heard. I, mean, I know you don't want it to define your life nah. and you've got a life and you've got an am- amazing sort of story behind it. But yeah. again, man, absolute yeah. pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you so much. Cause it's not an easy story to tell, obviously. Nah. But it's all good, man. I'll, yeah, had a good good time. So. Sick. Legend. Right, right. Signed it off. Peace. Club good. Club good. Club good. Club good.